When last we left our brave and mighty adventurers, they had taken a little bit of a respite. They were in the hamlet, they had met the blacksmith, and our resident cleric had learned how to consecrate. Sort of. He doesn't know exactly what to do yet, but he now has the tools to do it. So, my dear friends, what would you like to do? Uh, consecrate. <laughs> ten out of ten. Yeah, um, I want to. I want to uh, bless that weapon. Uh, are are we? Uh, has it been finished now? Is it ready to be? Uh, it is almost finished. Okay. Um. Hmm. Well, I don't think I have anything to do until it's finished. So for okay. me, at least, that's that is that. Um. The rest of you guys would have had a short rest, so you can do what you will. If there's anything you guys want to do inside before we get to that, that is fine. If not, I will fast forward. All right, uh, roll a sneeze check for me, Zir. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was muted. No, you were. Okay, good. Um, sneeze would be, I'm going to do a con save. Okay. <laughs> Is it against a spell or other magical effect? I don't know how magical your sneezes. I'm going to roll a binge. All right, that sounds fair. <laughs> I got the same number. My sneeze right. didn't my sneeze didn't go great. I'm feeling a little out of it. So yeah, you gonna... you sneeze hard enough to like bonk your head on the table. Yeah, so I'm just going to be chilling. Battle okay. music starts playing, we all roll initiative. <laughs> right? Very roll good. initiative against the table. It wronged me. What can I say? Well, it doesn't sound like anyone is doing anything, so, um, Galnus, when you finish the sword, how do you present it to the party? Oh, oh we... I was, I was still, um, fixing the cameras, sorry. No, no worries. Are we uh, pre-sleep or post-sleep? Ah, uh, pre-sleep. Because I'm gonna, I'm, yeah, I plan to burn, uh, luck points to keep the concentration work, the, uh, consecration work good, okay. so I would do that for Pre-sleep. Okay. Yeah, it's still pre-sleep. Understood. More than likely, I'm probably finishing up at the forge, so even if I'm the weapon is completely ready, uh, I'll probably allow my uh, I guess my my, my, my apprentice <laughs> to uh, I'd allow him to bring it in to uh, present it to the group. Okay, uh, he wouldn't leave you out there. He'd want to help you clean up, unless you like sent him away. He no. he wants to be involved with you with like helping clean up. Um, I will take the spirits back into the lantern. We will clean up in an adequate fashion. Um, uh, I assume I didn't make those. There are. Uh, did I? Did I know if there's a uh, a scabbard for this sword? Um, um, I think Bosric still has the scabbard. Yeah, I would. I would still have it. Okay. Um, I would have kind of like you. You would have been able to lay out the pieces to see how it was broken before four twelving, whatever. All right. Um, so then I would just kind of tuck it, holding it reverse, and just walk in. Uh, where is everybody at this point? Um. Clovis, I think you're just coming out of that spooky back room. Uh, Queen Nazir, you were wherever you plops down, and Boz, sitting, you're wherever yeah. you plops down. Yeah. Queen yeah. and I are sitting at a table together, and unless Boz moved, he would still be at the table with us. No, he, he was off in a corner. Ah. So, I, I would see Bosrek, I'm assuming. You're still, uh, you are visible. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He would actually come to you as he sees you. Uh, so looking, to, he's walking in. His head is down, like he's looking down at the ground. He's, oh. oh, and he would just flip it around and then just kind of blade laying across his forearm, hold the hilt and go. The best I can do. It's an inch shorter than the previous one. 
but it is you notice uh boz you've been around swords before you have ne you have only seen a sword like this in the finest sword shops of the adamant isles it is incredible workmanship I've known a couple of smiths but none as talented as you you need to I mean, meet, meet more you need to meet more smiths probably and i'm gonna do a warrior oh. check when, when you say you need to meet more smiths, uh, your lantern flares a little bit and you get a tiny burn on your ass. <laughs> and it feels kind of like some, like a hand came out of your lantern and slapped you on the ass. Like yeah, a, like a, like a, like a, like a, that's sort of incorrect or at a boy. Like, how should I L feel like, about this? Like a be nice to yourself. Like a oh. stop being mean to my friend. Yeah, and Boss is going to like hold out his hand for a warrior's handshake. Oh. And I'll reach up and, and take your arm. I mean, you're dead, Gunnis. Um, I you, made Dondrick. a sword. I didn't save your life. It's okay. Dondrick walks forward with um, a rag over his arm and holds out his hand for the sword. Uh, he takes the sword. He runs an oil rag across it to make sure it's clean. And then he runs a little bit of water over it, takes the scabbard, sheathes it, and hands it back to you. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, well, you did all the hard work. I'll just pop the bellows and talked about God for a little bit. It's not that hard, really. And don't sell yourself too short. Hmm. And um, I will say, if you looked at the sword, you would notice down near the guard, um, there is like a little... Um, it looks like there's three... Um, small, like probably no more than two to three centimeters. I'd say about two centimeters at most three. I'd say three centimeters. One looks like a, uh, just a couple of angles that looks sort of like a dwarf's head. Um, one to the side of it looks like, um, an anvil, but it's at like an angle. So you have a flame dwarf head, uh, and looks like an anvil, like a, Well, uh, and now you got two blades. They should both serve you pretty well. One more step. You should be here for this, too. We all, it, that way we all, there's all a piece of all this when I can finally use this for what I want it to. What do you mean? We'll feel the pain from all of us. What do you, what do you mean a piece from all of us? What are you going to cut us? No, like you've reforged it. Um, but I think as much consecration as we can put into this, we should. Um, Bosric, roll a perception check for me. And Zir and Clove, or not Clove, sorry, Zir and Quedan, since you're at the table, go ahead and roll perception for me as well. Will do. Uh, 21. Very nice. My five. Also very nice. 16. Still good. Unfortunately, does not. Uh, you notice, uh, Quedan. Uh, as the rule of three, <laughs> yeah. As um, as the sword moves in the light, there it gives off more of a shine than like a steel sword should. But Zir and Bosric, you notice that the shine isn't like light hitting a sword. It's like there's like a small like trace of white light going up and down the blade. And Zir, with your twenty five, there's something very special about this sword. It looks similar to the bullets that Lady Thane showed you, as if perhaps by getting a natural 20 and pouring god power into the sword, it has become consecrated blessed steel. So, Bosric, you can mark on your sword that one of your swords is blessed steel. Well, this is going to be a... You have to do a custom one for it, because I... <laughs> yeah. What do I... I just... You just, like, put a note on the sword, um, which is going to make it easier to consecrate. It has lowered the DC by five. Thanks. 
And, and I'm uh, looking at that. I say, you sell yourself short, Garnus. You're blessed. And your hands work wet miracles. Are we are we adding more wets? Clovis, are you adding more wets? You're you're here at this point. Yeah. Um I think uh Clovis will approach and say, Well, God's willing. Yes, we're adding more wet. Okay. We're adding more what? And well, how does that wet? What she, it's what she calls the like, thing that the matron gave her that like, makes a sword uh fiery. It was a it was in liquid form when they put it on. We've had so many wets. We've had a hot wet. We've had a poison wet. We've had a cold wet. I don't know what to call them other than wet. <laughs> oh, that sounds disgusting. Um, all right. And your sword. It's, it's... Your sword looks wet. Well, actually, your sword looks dry. Well, and I will was... hold. I will hold up my hammer. It looks just like my hammer. It's because it's it's things that were like. Um... Does it? Like there was a liquid that the um, matron gave us that did cold damage since wet. Uh, you put it on a weapon. And... After speaking with the DM uh, about my weapon, yeah, my weapon would have the same sheen as that sword. Since since always or since since I made this okay. since he made this new one the new one yeah yeah I mean that's also dry wow well, that's not your standard. Dry. That, nothing makes a smith feel as good about his Did wares as sword? your weapons look dry. They do well. My weapons are wet, and your weapons are dry. I, mm. I think we're going to move on from this. I've got a prayer. <laughs> if anyone was interested in con in the consecration of the sword, ha! <laughs> I just got why we moved on. All right. Okay. So, Clovis, roll, uh, before you do a Consecrate check, roll a Religion check. Okay. Uh, Religion is... Religion. Religion is 24. All right. Um, as you sit down, um, all of you see Clovis's eyes go completely black for a second. And, Clovis, you see in your mind's eye a vision of what you need to do. Uh, you need to focus the energy of whatever consecration you're doing. You need to beseech the god that you are consecrating it to. Mm -hmm. And then you run two fingers from the suba of the blade to the point, And then on the other side from the point back down to the suba. Got it. Okay. Um, then I will... Uh begin that process and i i do have a a prayer that i will uh, that clovis will uh utter as he as he does this okay um, give me the prayer first and then i'll have you roll the check because okay. your your prayer will determine the dc which mm -hmm. will then be reduced by five gotcha um obviously he can't control all of the light in this entire room but he is going to light a candle and uh ceremonially snuff it out as he has been um <clears throat> And all of you will hear him say, For a man that's called to serve the light, this blade imbue with darkest night, forged in steel, shining bright, a black tip blade in raven's flight. Garashi. All right. Go ahead and roll for me a... Hmm, what do I want to call this? Let's say... Roll a d20, and then add your wisdom modifier and your proficiency bonus. All right. Okay. Wisdom plus four. Plus, okay, so plus eight. That is a 26. All right. So you guys all see as Clovis intones this prayer, and it's sort of echoed in whispers as he's saying it. And... Even though he can't snuff out the lights in the room, the lights in the room start to dim. And then you hear, as his fingers reach the suba on the other side, a soft flutter of wings. And then the lights come back up, and the blade is pitch black. Ooh. Um. 
I'll look up at Boz uh, and and Galnus, excited. I think that means it worked. Wet no, dry. You have to make more. Wet dry burn. Um, Oh, <laughs> I that Oops. giggle is in character. <laughs> so it's uh, done. No, it's, it's done. Oh, it's good. It's good. Mm. I'll uh, I'll I'll represent it to Boz as it was previously presented to him. Well, that's just disrespectful. Oh, good point. Uh, I'll present it to Galnus first. Uh, would you Just like to give him the fucking sword? <laughs> okay. Um. Sadly, not dark blade now, but <laughs> uh, Boz picks it up and he regards it. And he thinks of Katya. He thinks of little Ella. He thinks of oaths, and he thinks of the one thing that, while well, isn't necessarily assured yet for all five of them, eventually. And he thinks of what he'd like to do with this sword, so he says, This one. I name this the final promise. As you do that flip to sheath it, you see that there is a contrail behind your sword of black flames. Thank you, Clovis. Thank you, Garashi. Um, as you say thank you, Garashi, um, everybody hears sort of a whisper. With It's not really from anywhere, it's kind of from everywhere. And it says, don't make me regret it. Oh. Um, Dondrick is just kind of like, oh, fallen workmanship, both of you. I think it's going to be a good weapon. Now I think... Uh, Master Smith, you and your comrades should get some rest. You've been forging for quite a while. You need some sleep. Can we do that steel stuff to everybody's weapon? Uh, I mean, I, I'm I'm not following. What do you mean? He'd have to remake it. I have to make the weapons. Oh. Okay. That's why I asked the... Uh, Whatever the hell that uh, thing was, or as much uh, the adamantine as I could get. Mm. Does it have to be adamantine to be? Yeah. Oh no, 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 no! That's Shiny? that's steel. That's actually his original sword. I just had to reforge it. Um, uh. But I, I, my goal was to make weapons out of the adamantine. Oh. Be that as it may, you need rest. All of you do. Mm -hmm. So hop to. Good night. <laughs> Since you're all going straight to bed. So I need a what is it, what am I looking for? A long sword? Uh a long sword plus one. Okay. Um but it will also have the additional uh, black fire effects, which I think I sent to the group. I may have only sent those to Clovis. Uh, if that is the case, I will make sure that you get them as well, Bosric. And then I'll also go in and add an additional plus one to attack for it being a masterwork. So basically it's plus two at two attack, plus one to damage, and the effects of the um, black fire. And it is keen, right? Yes. But as Zira's walking to bed, Zira's gonna go up to Galnus and and pull out her rapier and present it to him. <laughs> Can you tell that it's wet? 
Can I tell I, that it's wet, DM? <laughs> yes, I want, you can tell I want that you it's to, wet. I want you to understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> it has a shiny lacquer on it as if it's covered in some kind of grease. Yeah, I can see. So comparatively dry, not, a, not an insult, just it's not wet. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I... I understand. And as he's doing that, he's actually testing the flexibility of the blade and oh, nice. its balance. And it's it's well made, but it's also probably a little old. Yeah, I've had this I've had this rapier since childhood. Um, probably, it is. I probably never sharpened it in my life. <laughs> it is dull. <laughs> Not that it's been used very often, though. To be fair, is is it really dull? Probably. Um, I'm going to just hold the sword and go, I, I can sleep in 10 minutes. And I just walk <laughs> back out the door. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, I'm Dondrick. also use this one, and she'll hold up the thorn now. Dondrick this rolls is... his eyes and follows you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I wouldn't look back at the second weapon. I would look at the one you presented to me that's got my attention. And I'll just yeah. go out and just, if you look outside, you could just see he's he's just sharpening the blade. She'll she'll sit patiently. If there's any like if there's any bends or anything in it, he'll you know put it in a vice and like kind of just get it back to true. Yeah, it's um it's of Lux Barrow make. It's not as nice as Bosrick's was, but it's a you know it's a good sword. It's it's as good as they can do on the mainland. Um, came from my mama. So any I would say any uh bends in the blade even if uh as it's coming up if there's a divot or anything i would just knock that back it's a rape here that's easy uh <laughs> yeah and just grind it down and then i'll eventually just come back in and just unlike the uh presentation of the other blade uh he didn't make this one so he'll just flip it around and just present it to you with just a handle there it'll actually cut something now oh thanks i'll have to practice <laughs> and she seems kind of intimidated by how sharp it is <laughs> and and i'll just walk and just i'm just gonna go sleep sounds good uh i think clovis also would have hung back during that little 10 minute period having seen dondrick again while there's like not something more pressing on his mind and I think as he goes off to bed after this, he would slip Dondrick a little piece of paper uh, as inconspicuously as he can that has like some some facts, information, and and like common prayers for uh, uh, for Oblak. Yay! <laughs> Dondrick uh, takes it and he, he acknowledges you with a head with a head shake, and then he also goes off to bed. That's awesome. Um. Okay. So. When you guys bed down, can everyone except Quedon, because Quedon still has the vial of moth powder, uh, make a wisdom save? Uh oh. Yarn. <laughs> Dangerous dreams are back. How close at Galness am I sleeping? Not close enough for the powder to help. I, I would let. I would. I would probably keep my distance from everyone. Fair. Is this a spell or other magical effect? It is. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Wisdom I'm safe? so glad you always check that. Wisdom safe, yes. A oh, wisdom safe. 24. I just like saying it. 29. But in fairness, I have a plus 13. <laughs> I got a 13. I got a 19. Okay. Um, Galnus and Bosric, you sleep successfully through the night. Um, Clovis... Um, you sleep peacefully for a while, and then you find yourself standing in a city, um, made of, it, look, it looks to be sandstone. And like my suddenly everything shakes, and there's a loud thunderous noise, and everything shakes for a moment. And then there's a pause. And then everything shakes again. And as you look up, you can see the way the sky is moving. It's moving too fast. 
and you realize now as you look around and you look at the terrain around you you are in a moving city and every time that happens something is putting its feet down and as you look forward down the street you see the head of a giant tortoise and another foot comes up Ooh. And you realize you are in a sandstone city on the back of a massive tortoise. This, <laughs> um, I shouldn't, not, I shouldn't be here yet. Did something, something happen? No, you, this... as you're looking around, you hear a screech. It is the most inhuman sound you have ever heard. And you can see other people in the street fall to the ground gripping their ears, but for some reason, as horrifying as the sound is, it doesn't seem to be having the same effect on you. And um, you can see the sky above you start to darken. And you hear a voice say, My... You're a brave one. We'll have to do something about that. Do I have my equipment? Yes. Okay. Uh, then I think Clovis instinctively will reach for the shield to draw it forward, but a, a sort of deeper unsettledness like takes root in him, and I think he takes the the battle posture that he's had more recently and then kind of sinks back into the reflexive sort of like uh hiding posture that he used to have when he first got to the hamlet behind okay. his shield um you hear a sort of <laughs> and the laugh echoes through the city and the tortoise stops and you see its head dip a little and it says my my clovis such a strong bastion. And now the clouds coalesce into a figure in a long, flowing black cloak. And you can see skeletal hands sticking out from the sleeves. And it kind of reaches up a hand, sort of, that's just sort of like dangling. And it says, What do you do when the shield, the wall, cracks? And it opens its hand. And as it does, you hear it as the shield on your arm explodes Ooh. and you hear another screech as the tortoise rears up its head and you can see a spear sticking out of its eye and it falls <laughs> to the side and the sandstone city around you begins to crumble and you are jolted awake uh i think clovis is running forward like down the streets uh, towards the head of the tortoise, and I don't remember what the room situation is like here, but anyone who is in the room with Clovis or in a room uh, nearby would just hear, Selena! <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's everyone. This is like a longhouse. <sighs> so, <sighs> I'm going to let you process that for a moment. As we go I to the other person. I want to do something, but, I'm a, but I know there's another person, so I'm going to wait until that happens before I interact, because I'm presuming they happen at the same time. Yeah, I'm... Ditto. Uh, yes, so... You will wake up simultaneously with Clovis. Clovis's scream will be what breaks you of your nightmare, but it is time for you to have a nightmare, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is your turn. Um, Zir, you, uh... You find yourself running through the streets. You're in full regalia. You have your rapier at your side. Your siblings are at your back, um, and in your arms there is a big score, gold, and nice. you know, notes and things. And you are running through the streets, and you hear um, your siblings behind you. Come on, we gotta go faster. We don't want them to catch us. And you realize you are coming up to one of your favorite escape routes. Cool. Um. I'll glance behind me. Who are we running from? You can't see. Uh, the city's too uh, dark. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. But you can hear alarm bells behind you as if the city guard has been roused. Ah, damn. One of our bigger strikes. I don't think anyone's found this route. We can still take it. And Zero will kind of glance towards the favorite escape route. Um, your siblings are right. All right, you first. You know the way. Hey, she'll lead. All right, as so she, uh, as she always does. <laughs> As you jump into this, uh, basically it's a sewer grate. You jump into this sewer grate, you hear it slam behind you, and you are in pitch blackness. Oh. Oh, shit. And you hear a voice as well. Softer, but it's still a voice. Death. Mm. I knew someone who used to go by that name. They were a lot bigger than you. You've taken what? something that doesn't belong to you, Seer. Yeah, that's how thieving works. And she's gonna, like, slam on the grate and try to open it. Uh, you can't find it. As you oh. go to slam on it, your hand passes into thin air. No, no, no. This is a conversation between you and me. Okay, what do you want? Where are my, where are my siblings? What siblings here? You don't have siblings. You're an unwanted discard. Your parents couldn't keep you. The rat can't stand you. And your crew only tolerates you because you're fast. You are alone you were born alone and you will die alone and a bony hand reaches out of the darkness and grabs you by the throat and lifts you into the air and you are woken by the screams from the bed next to you uh i reach for my shield mm. oh um, Lady in Black, get you? Hmm. Uh, yeah, um, mm -hmm. God, I that. Oh. Sorry, everyone. See ya? You alright? She can eat you? Fine. Who? Hmm. Who got one you? One, one of the dukes you're not familiar with. She, uh, gets in your dreams sometimes. Uh, makes them bad. So we have to fight the the boogeyman? Woman, but yeah. Essentially. Are they saying you're doing anything to us? Uh, you both have a point of exhaustion. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, a something. <laughs> like a Deadpool. Like, I, su <laughs> I suddenly feel it coming. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Other than preventing um, us from sleeping, nothing so far. Well, that's the, the the good thing. We can just go back to sleep. Uh, sometimes they uh, linger. Oh, like the cranberries. Do Do okay. you need a sleep aid? We have one. Uh, if you've got something, uh, I mean, it, it'll do the job. So I'm you will gonna, have a headache. It, I'm going to interject with two things. One, she hasn't been able to break through the spell before. And two, it was always her in your dreams. This was very clearly a masculine figure. Mm -hmm. Okay. I could just, and I hold up my hammer, I could just, and just put you down. 
the oh. spell of the safe house. Yeah. The even before the hallow spell, when the skull was activated, which you know yes. it is because you watched it get reactivated. She couldn't get you in here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I appreciate your willingness to assist Galnus, but uh, I don't think smacking me in the head will stop the dreams. I just think it, probably it would put me back into it a lot faster than just trying to fall asleep normally. Um, he just good. slowly lowers his hand like, okay. Tried to help. I've, I appreciate I've had, it. I've had too many sleepless nights. Or too many... Uh, Y'all have had too many sleepless nights. Um, perhaps we should start passing it around. And I hand it initially to Clovis. This when when he says pass it is... around, I offer my cigar to the next person. Like, <laughs> I'll I'll give it uh back to back to Queden and <laughs> idly reach. For the cigar. Um, I I think uh, I think I'm basically done for the night. Um, but uh, so you you should hold on to this for the rest to make sure that uh, you you get a good night's sleep. But in in the future, yeah, passing it around might be a good idea. This one was different. Yeah, it, though um, it was. How so? Zero will kind of lock eyes with you to see like if it feels like it was different for you too. I mean obviously you screamed away, but Yeah. I think there's um, this moment of like connection of like, yeah, that fucking was awful. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh stronger. First off, I, I don't I don't remember the, being able to have these dreams here. I thought this we were supposed to okay. be safe in here with the protection of the, the skull and especially now that i've i've blessed the uh i've hallowed the location and that should have provided extra protection but what does hallow do oh this is so... this is both a player and character question rules has written it wouldn't do anything to stop this but um, sure. uh i i imbued it with some holy protection uh which was supposed to fortify courage and, and help stop this sort of thing from happening, but um, doesn't seem to have worked. And was I the can powder... still feel the spell, so the spell worked. It just got through it, I guess. Is the powder that you have specific to what the hell's her name? Elizabeth? Or is it just any bad dream? Powder? Is that uh, what the it is? thing that Queen has? Oh, okay. Isn't it powder based? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Um I I um I prayed for this. I'm sorry, remind me of the uh deity. Uh Sora. This was a gift of Sora's dreams, protection, but I only have one. It's been keeping me rested for the last several nights, but well, but perhaps it's it, time we start. How does it work, though? I've just I've kept it on me, and I. I uh, hmm. I've slept without incident every night that I've had it. That's, that's a question for Sola. <laughs> but... Galnus, you didn't have any nightmares, did you? Oh, no, no. And this isn't a problem that you've ever had before. I mean, I know you. No, uh, I've had before, I've so. had nightmares before. Yeah, I mean, everybody does. It's it's but, a thing well, that happens. Does everybody have these nightmares? Sort of recurring with a, with a, the same person or, or entity doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, that that's that's called a nightmare. Oh. 
Okay. Um, you guys have never had nightmares before? No, I have, but not like I think this. I think if you had had the kind of nightmares that we were talking about, these specific ones, you would you would know what we meant. But Scary was ones. Liz, that's... Was Elizabeth around when you were? Uh, I never I group? never met an uh, uh, Liz, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know who that is. Mm. Is she uh, like? Yeah, I think you said she's one of the new dukes. I guess so. I don't really know if she's a duke. No, she she's, it, she's, she's got the power to do this. She's kind of her own thing. Yeah, I I've already told you the dukes that I I know. And mm. two are dead that I know of. Uh Dreadmaster, her name was written in the book with the names of the other dukes, yes. Elizabeth, yes. Mm. Uh so yes, she's a she is a duke. Oh. Or at, at least something here considers her a duke because the yeah. the book that the matron gave uh, that that gives information it it listed her name with all of the other dukes. So I'm guessing she took up the role at some point. What I'm curious about is it seems like either the matron's power or Adivar and and the mother hearth protected you while you were in there. Um. Uh, probably, or if this, uh, what would you say, Elizabeth, 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 Elizabeth. Oh, that's it's a weird one. Doesn't flow yeah. very nice. No. Maybe that's why she's pissed off. But in any case, um, she probably didn't know I was here. Yeah, she never had any reason to mess with you. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I. Uh, everybody I know is seems to be mostly gone. So if she took somebody's place, probably was. I was probably so low beneath notice, or probably she didn't know I was here. Uh, that's my two working theories. Okay. So now keep in mind, can't... I'm exhausted, and I'm thinking. So these aren't two good things to put together. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, honestly, the rest of you probably should get back to sleep. Oh, I'm going to. What did you... It, this might be a sensitive topic, but what did you see in the dream? Um, I was in uh, the city. Standar's city. On Which one? Uh, kind of just... Capital T, capital C, the city. Yeah, it's the, it is the the city on Stendar's back. It's one of the afterlives. Um, if you ever hear me uh, offering a place in the city to someone, that's that's what that is referring to. Oh yeah, when you want us dead. I don't. It's. I remember. You know, just I'm just I'm just putting in a you know I'm opening a tab, for when when we do die, and we'll have a we'll have a spot there. Anyways, unimportant. Um, I was there, and everything seemed fine at first. It was a little disorienting, of course, but dreams often are. But there was some thing there, and I know I didn't recognize it, but in the moment, I felt like I did. And it wasn't, it didn't feel the way Elizabeth has felt in our dreams in the past. It was... Different. Different, yes. It felt more... Elizabeth obviously is malevolent as well, but she's always sort of been toying with us. Sort of cat and mouse. This felt more... Um, spider and web. If that makes any sense. It does. With Elizabeth, it seems like she's letting us move around and be free until she's ready to deal with us. With this thing, it felt like it already had me. It felt like it was playing with its food. Well, we know now where yeah, she gets her power from. Well, maybe there's just someone encroaching on her turf. Or it's, a, or it's a source of her power. I'm not going to say the name for fear of, or of further distress. Yes, you. I'm, I'm, but I understand what you're referring to. How much of this are you guys even sure of? Or, or are we just 
ballpark in this around the table here. What do you mean? You're all throwing out like, what if, what if? Like how much of this is known and how much of this is an assumption? What we know is that she is somehow connected to Show it to him. You can. It's fine. All right, show it to him. Show it to him's just fine. Okay. I'm learning all kinds of things. She's connected to um, the the tyrant. Show it to him. The the original fear in our world, uh, which makes her about as powerful and skilled in what she can do as is possible and what she does is mess with your mind when dm when we saw shoatan come out of mess or like that glimpse of shoatan that we got did he have bony hands you're muted <laughs> sorry no you're fine. um you didn't get a good look at his hands Okay. But he did sort of look like a shrouded figure. He looked wasted. Um, okay. And Clovis, even when you recognized him, you know that all of the depictions of Shoatan, he didn't look this, like, desiccated. Mm -hmm. Whatever got pulled out of Mez was very weak. Mm -hmm. And it looked a little bit like what you saw. Okay. I, I, I figured... Uh, and I think Clovis is kind of trying to avoid making that connection because he doesn't want it to be the truth. <laughs> um, it um, was different. Either it's something stronger than her or she's become stronger. And um, it might, uh, might be our fault. Well, I, I mean... She kind of made it seem like we weren't worth doing anything about yet, but I'm sure news is spread quickly. Well, I mean, we did just, uh, oh, sorry, guys. Uh, you don't miss we, a we castle just, breaking off a cliff, breaking yeah. off into the sea. If, if what you're saying is true and there was only a few of my dukes left, Killing one of the older ones, probably a good way to get noticed. Uh, Sorry. And I take a drink. <laughs> we haven't, no dreams like this have occurred for a good few nights. Like, I don't know how many, but. This probably feels... about, a, probably three or four. Yeah. We've been, we've been sleeping in the portable fortress. Which uh, we're and not we're safe in, safe in. More specifically, for multiple of those rests, we were within Galnus's sanctuary. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Which is there why I asked. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's what Clovis was trying to piece together. Um, oh. <sighs> Seems like a... Can't help but feel like it is associated with recent events. Targeted. <laughs> Probably. In any case. A challenge. Um, all challenges aside, I suppose we should get back to rest. Whatever of it we can find. I'm already laying on the ground, like my head resting on my hammer, like way ahead of you. Funny enough, starting to sleep with a lit cigar in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still feel like if I can do anything to, I mean, the two of you look exhausted. I, I, I would hate to make that any worse. Like I said, I've been blessed. Literally, peaceful rest. If I can, get, I mean, Zero, will you take it, please? And 
I think I'm okay. I'll I'll walk over and put a hand on on Quedon's shoulder. If you want to do something to help, make sure you're at your best. That way, mm. we don't necessarily have to be. Lovis, I know that was meant to make me feel better, but <laughs> I I wish you good rest. See you in the yeah. morning. Sure. Lesser restoration does not remove exhaustion. No, it does not. You just stuck with that one? Mm hmm. That's fine. Rats. Level one nah, exhaustion rats. is not like. It's not, it's not the worst. Isn't, isn't that disadvantage? It's um, on a disadvantage checks, on ability yeah. checks. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's well, going to be an issue. Well. <laughs> That's depends not on, on saves. Depends on yeah, where we go. It's not on okay. saves, and it's not on, on casting on, spells. Depends on where we go and what we do. Okay. Exactly. All right, Hong Shu. <laughs> Hong Shu, Hong Shu, Hong Shu. <laughs> I think Zero sleeps. I think once everyone's kind of fallen asleep, Zero will lay in bed for a while. Does Clovis fall back asleep? He, as soon as he's finished talking with Quedon, you see him like rifle through his bag and pull out some books. He he does not appear interested in going back to sleep. He's gonna come sit on the bed next to you. Um, after a few minutes, Lady Thane comes with two cups of like warm herbal tea and just puts them on the table next to Clovis's bed. And like she looks exhausted, like her hair's down, like she's in her nightgown. And she just takes the candle and just gives you a nod and walks out of the room and shuts the door. Hey, wait, Lady Thane. Yes, dear, what is it? You too? No, your friend is just very loud. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. She's attacked all of us before. Um. It's good to know. We should talk about it in the morning. In the morning, please. Rest well when you can. And she <laughs> shuts the door. Is and it's okay? like, the tea smells very good. Like, yeah, you zero can tell, like, she put tea. like honey in it. It's, oh, it's yeah. good. I'm drinking yeah. the shit out of that tea. <laughs> It is um, a honey herbal tea. Um, it does not remove the exhaustion, but it does kind of like relax your nerves. Mm. Definitely doesn't smell like mushrooms at all. <laughs> I'm gonna read over Clovis's shoulder. Okay. What's he? What's he looking at? Um, I think he's. It. It might not make full sense at first because he's like in the middle of a book but i think you know him well enough by now that after reading like a couple paragraphs you'd be like this sounds like some shit that he would say um and then oh. at a certain point he pulls out a pen and crosses out a section and re like paraphrasing <sighs> rewrites it uh in clearer language and what is it about um, like what's it's, the subject matter? It's a, a treatise on religion. Specifically, I suppose, on this particular night, given what's happening, um, he might be writing about, or, or going over his writings about, well, I guess probably uh, Sura, uh, the, the dreamer. And um, this particular section would be on the importance of uh, sleep, wellness, uh, and it's it's benefits to working populations in the city uh, and overall production. Some real dork shit. Yeah, <laughs> she'll read it. She's just kind of sitting next to you, awkwardly mm -hmm. reading over your shoulder. Uh, eventually, he'll like it's sort of he's sitting crisscross applesauce, and it's centered in the middle of his legs. Mm -hmm. He'll shift it onto the knee that is closest to her so it's like more centered between the two um but he's not going to say anything oh thanks you seemed interested yeah we're we're friends right i should think so okay Very 
right. I'm going to say that the night passes without further incident. I think she'll eventually fall asleep on your shoulder. Hmm. And you hear her occasionally mumble like, hmm. you know, like I think she'll, <laughs> she'll like, I doubt she actually cares that much, but she'll at mm -hmm. least feign enjoyment because <laughs> she knows it matters to you. Hmm. Like, oh, right. yes, interesting. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> like, I think she does read it and take it in, but she, she she's maybe read three books. <laughs> All right, so the rest of you wake up rested. Um, who has the um, the pendant from Sura now? Is it still you, Queen? And in all of that, yeah. Bishop, I'm not sure actually who has it. Neither of them accepted my offer okay. for help. All I want to do is heal. Okay. All right, so it is the next morning. I'll eat some breakfast and uh, continue drinking. Okay. Clovis doesn't really know what to do because this has never happened to him before. Um, so he's not going to move until Zero wakes up. So he's like just sitting there kind of awkwardly reaching over because his, his left arm, I think, is just like down, just kind of stuck. Um, and he's just like writing. Zir, Zir, Zir's exhausted. <laughs> so, she probably won't wake up for a little bit. If everyone else starts moving around, though, I think she'd wake up yeah. eventually. I think I think you would probably be woken up by the sort of hubbub. Oh, oh, oh. my arm's Sorry. been asleep for three hours. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. No, but... it's okay. You need a rest. Thanks. I appreciated how you um, continued commenting on my work, even though your eyes were closed. Um, That's the sign of a good reader. Yeah, I've got eidetic memory. So I... In the noggin. Yeah, okay. <laughs> she's gonna, she's going to walk away. <laughs> She goes and brushes her hair. She has like, I, I think I've commented on it a little bit, but she has like a very intense hair routine every day because she's got a mound of hair. So that's like a large portion of the wake up routine while everyone else is getting settled and eating, drinking, whatever. But she goes and spends a good 30 minutes to an hour on her hair. All right then. Uh, Clovis will join join the group i, yeah, I, I assume we all sort of congregate around at the the table yeah galvis was the first one up and he's eating breakfast so you'd be joining him yeah oh uh you're you're muted i was just this speaking my mind out loud quietly mm -hmm. that's all um no i said i would be up <laughs> at like the bar uh like i wouldn't be at a table because my yeah. armor's back on a table hmm. uh he'll take a stool next to you so, sleep well? Yeah, I, I slept great. Some, some lunatic woke me up in the middle of the night. <laughs> Sorry again for that. Um, good. Good. You ever get back to sleep? Not really, no. Those sort of things. Um, when I get unsettled like that, it's more than likely going to lead to another worse dream afterwards, so I tend to just kind of ride it out. Oh, good luck with that. Thanks. I will need it. Oh, your uh, your horn friend may want what uh, you did to Osrex blade. Hmm. Um, I suppose I could. I don't know that Haragoki will talk to me in the same way, though. I think all it requires is a connection with the gods, which the both of you also 
have, and, and, and Quedon as well. I think perhaps that one might be better left to one of you. You're the smith, obviously, so I expect you have a connection to the metal, as it were. And, um, well, she has a connection to Haragoki, so... Oh, maybe she can talk to Hiragoki and and um, while I uh, beat the shit out of some metal. Mm -hmm. I am curious. It seems like depending on the god that you entreat, they are able to imbue different effects into the metal. Uh, Stendar offered me a few choices. Um, but Garashi offered something entirely different for Bosric's sword. So Whoa. I wonder what the forge and the hearth might offer. Swift kick to the ass. <laughs> Some of our foes do need that. I'm not all surprised by that. I mean, if you want an intellectual conversation about the book of the week, you're not coming to me. You're going to go to some, you know, Brainiac or something. So, not surprising what... <clears throat> I mean, really, if you're talking to any god, I mean, I assume you'd know something about them. So, you know something about them, then ask them what they are. And ask for something that relates to that, maybe? I suppose... That said, I think Garashi gave a uh, special blessing because of his connection with Bosric. Um, the gods seem to be... Obviously, they are all uh, incredibly powerful, miles above any of us, but they all have their own strengths, and um, they all seem... This is not something I thought I'd ever be able to know firsthand, but they seem to have distinct personalities and, and, and ways of thinking, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, the way that you and I might approach the same problem differently. I might try and look for a solution in my book, and you might try and figure out a solution by uh, seeing how hard you could hit it with your hammer. Oh, well, when you're a hammer, every problem's a nail. Exactly. Uh, I think Adavar and the Mother Hearth might uh, respond better to you. If, you, if you're not interested, I, I certainly can, can try it, but uh, I think there are some gods, uh, probably Atros as well, um, that uh, might respond better to you. Why? I don't entreat them. I don't, I mean... I have nothing but reverence for my, my friends and <clears throat> I'm a little bit in awe of how powerful they are considering why spend time with me for 200 years when you could do something way better than that. So definitely, uh, but I don't, I don't know that many other th entities would um, suffer me. I think there's a common misconception among a lot of people. Uh, about the way that uh, a relationship with the gods works. You may not be calling out to them. You may not be watching them, listening to them, looking for them. But uh, I assure you, Galnus, they're watching you. And um, even if you're not, you know, outwardly devoting yourself to them the way that I do to Stendar and, and Quedon does to Zarakis, you are their folk. You're the kind of person that they like. I mean, obviously, they've chosen to if, stick with you. If you find somebody who, for some reason, likes me, I'll talk to them. I'll work on that. Or I'll try to. You know, it's just they could see me and go, wow, that's my folk. And then uh, a swig and a puff later, they're going to be, this is not my folk. <laughs> and you don't think that I have that problem? I mean, come on. I... I tend to like myself very much. Um, but I can admit, I'm rather insufferable sometimes. Oh, yeah. It's charming in its way. Thank you. I think uh, you're 
charming in your way too. So, oh um, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll we'll just kind of throw ourselves at the problem then and uh, find out what works. Well, just let me be the hammer, and if you see that it's not working, work on something while I swing away. You got it. Breakfast. I'll just push over a bowl. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. This is, um... the same. As it has been, uh, every time I've eaten here. Um, it's good. <laughs> I'm looking around for the cook, just in case there. Uh, yeah, the, the, you, you do get Lady Thing kind of narrowing her eyes at you. It's, uh, oh. it's very good. It's very, uh... I, I just. <clears throat> Do you think I had a smorgasbord buffet for two hundred years? Uh, yeah, I suppose I'm preaching to the choir. And even I'm narrowing my voice, my eyes a little <laughs> bit at you. Hmm. I wonder. Uh, I wonder if there's anyone around who uh, likes to cook. Love to cook. There's nothing to cook. Well, surely there's got to be something. Uh, well, uh, uh, mushroom soup. No, I, I've had my four panini. Oh, we can, I'm, I'm sure we can elevate this eating experience somehow. You can't. You can't. We'll see. Lady Amelia, can, is there anything that we can do to really push the bold flavors that we've had for as long as we have? Do you have any fresh ideas on uh, making these palatable mushrooms even more flavorful? Well, I will take it up with my finest chef, Skeldus. Um, as, as, as I assumed you would. And, and, and in the time that they work on it, I will get sober. <laughs> uh -huh. I didn't, uh -huh. I didn't fun, want to interrupt, but, but, but <laughs> Bowser probably would be awake at this time too, just by his normal soldier rhythm, but has not, but is just sitting and eating. And then upon hearing that, he'd be like, oh, over 200 telling jokes. Home sweet home. <clears throat> uh, I'll, I'll sort of turn and, and point with my whatever utensil we have here in the medieval times. I don't know Spork. if those were invented yet. Probably, probably just normal utensils. Spork. Spork. With my wooden spork. Um, my fantasy spork. Uh, point over at Balsric. You, you listen to me, Balsric. It's people like this who get set in their ways, these old timers. That's why nothing ever changes around here. I bet uh, we can find something to spruce it up. Old timers. Now, just a moment here. Don't you worship Stindar? Mm -hmm. You should have respect for your elders, boy. I do. Uh, and I respectfully disagree with your uh, opinion that there is nothing we can do to elevate this food. I'm sh There's got to be something. <clears throat> we can find I promise you this, Clovis. I promise you on my other as a cleric. Mm. If you find any spices out there in the world, I will make you the finest dish you have ever tasted. That's a promise. I intend to make sure you keep. She smiles. I take a big swig and I go, we're never going to have that fucking meal. <laughs> Maybe we could kill a werewolf. Mm. That's meat. Mm. True. You don't want to eat that meat. It's it's just dead. and It's mushrooms and dead. Mm. It's, not, it's not good meat. And I have, in fact, had wolf before. It was a lean it's, hunting night and it's, it's not wolf it's you'd be eating people yeah it's people um, it's people which no, I, I don't know, know. No he, actually, he actually for a minute he, he like plays like there's okay. a reason you didn't there's there's a reason you didn't sense an overwhelming excitement mm -hmm. from me there are people who eat people there's like an a, entire there's an thing. entire religion devoted to it. Those who worship the hungering frost. Mm -hmm. 
The, uh, oh, so there was a, a young uh, a tiefling from northern Luxboro. He had his horns were weird, and his skin was blue, and he had antlers instead of horns. It's it was a whole thing. Hmm. I've also heard stories of some uh, uh, clerics and and other devoted followers of Atros eating the flesh of their foes R ritualistically, of course. Of course. Um, but uh, as a as a means of strengthening themselves for the next battle. So. Uh... Well, when you worship the battle rager, you know. Hmm. Um, also, you know, there's not to speak of the, uh, the clerics of Xanagost, who are able to retain the memories of those that they kill by eating their flesh. Mm, that's right. I didn't, uh, think about that one, because it's creepy. Um, it's very, it's, she laughs, it's very creepy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, what the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> Zir's gonna sit down at the <laughs> yeah, uh, my favorite. Amelia <laughs> throws up on her hands and says, yeah. cannibalism! Hello, <laughs> friends. We were uh, discussing uh, potentially yeah. expanding the menu. Um, ah, yes. <laughs> we're still we're still in the workshopping stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your sample that pains me. Uh, seriously. <laughs> we just Sweeney Todd your campaign. Mm -hmm. Try the priest oh. indeed. Attend the tale of Amelia Fane. <laughs> they told her all of her dishes were played. Oh my goodness! So, I'll, I'll do the whole thing. You, you don't test me. That was excellent. Don't um, test me, boys. We're, we're in yes. the danger zone, chat. This is the most I'll address the group and be like, "Have have uh, y'all decided what you want to do next?" No, absolutely not. Group effort. Yes. No. Um. That said. Uh, yes or no? Lady, no. Um. Lady Thane, the nightmare, it was, um, worse. How do you mean? Elizabeth seemed to be stronger. I mean, <laughs> I blessed this place, and, and we've got the skull, which previously kept her out of here, and still she came to not one, but two of us. If it was even Elizabeth. Yes, that is the other thing. It was. What do you mean? It was different. She um she sort of like cleans up her place and walks over to you. How was it different? The entity that was there with us was not it didn't feel like the Elizabeth that we've encountered before. It was more predatory, I suppose. It was, it was cruel. Mm -hmm. Not toying. Well just evil. Your um your fallen friend, Mazura. Do you know the circumstances of his death? Are you sure he's dead? He didn't come back. And before his death, uh, the Lady in Black relieved him of his connection. Death is never really death, is it, here? But I... No, I... I felt you, um... something different. I thought I did. Your friend Mazura is dead, though his death was different. He was brought back to the mortal world, and the blood that coursed through his veins had gained enough power from the fear and apprehension of the members of this realm to actualize itself. Which means that the first cleric of Shoatan, who sits in that fucking mansion, now has her patron back. <clears throat> she was probably jealous of Mazura's connection. Oh, she She's... made that clear. Yeah. So she relieved him of it. Stole it. She stole something. But, did Mazura ever tell you what he was? Why someone he said, was the way he was? Someone said it once, right? Fear something? Fearborn. One of the rarest types of dark bloods. Somewhere in his history, Ishawatan. 
He is related by blood to the God of Fear. That's what she said. I imagine a great deal of jealousy there for someone as devoted as she is. That's how it seemed. He was a good man. To use a gift like that for the betterment of others takes extraordinary force of spirit. You were lucky to have known him. So this, so this Elizabeth person is more powerful now than we were already scared of her before? Unfortunately. Or, that wasn't Elizabeth at all, and Showa Ten is playing on your past connections to Mazura. Mm. I'm looking at the ones of you that had dreams, and you were the closest to him. You specifically, Sierra. Yeah. Oh, weirdly, it's the two opposite ends of the spectrum. Closest and furthest. I don't know if that's true. Quidan didn't have any dreams. He had a cheat code. <laughs> so does that, does that mean I'm not going to have any dreams? No. Showatan will find his way to worm into your mind, too. But you aren't as susceptible as the other four. Huh? Yes. So does this mean we deal with it uh, now, or...? I... I don't know if taking out Elizabeth will sever Shoatan's connection with this world, but it's the only thing I know to do. This will be unlike any fight any of you have ever experienced before. I mean, if we continue to you be exhausted, that. we can't fight anybody else either. Well, I ate this mushroom chili once. <clears throat> that was a bad fight. Yes, well, if you have any other allies you've made here in the hamlet other than those who live in this village, I would rely on their help. If not... Godspeed. I, I only know the matron. and the matron bless you. I doubt it. I doubt it. Fulger would want to set his will against against her. Maybe Gredos, but not her. Worth asking. Might they want to take down the tyrant? If not her herself the risk that she poses to all of them by this new power that she's gotten, that might be able to upset the balance among all of them. That is a good point. Maybe some leverage there. Maybe worth it. Maybe worth it. And we do uh, we will now be coming to him as the conquerors of Seltradot. We've proven our mettle. Nothing else. Here we go to the matron. We seek out the... Uh... We seek out Folger and then we go for Elizabeth. Good plan is any. I I don't have a, a dog in this fight. I don't know any of these people with the exception of uh the matron, so if you tell me You know Gretos. And they've mentioned him. Oh no, but they weren't talking about going after Gretos. They were talking <clears throat> yeah, about Elizabeth or You might like Folger, actually. I was thinking the same thing. He's a uh a builder, a maker of things, an inventor of sorts. I knew someone like that once. Well, sounds like you'll know someone like that again. Seems as good a plan as any. I mean, what's the alternative? Gretos? Gretos with, with a dream still being attacked. Oh. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. Fighting, I wouldn't fighting him, fighting him right now gets us nothing. Let's do it then. And we're off. And which uh, drink master? Which is closer? 
the matrons, uh, the matrons, uh, cathedral or Folger's factory. Considering you have no idea how to get to the Manufactorum, you just saw it off in the distance, probably the cathedral. Yeah. Uh, Gauntless, you were saying there was something um, you were going to do. <clears throat> right as he uh, says, all right, we're, and we're off. I'll be like, goat! <laughs> <laughs> as I'm calling for my uh, mount. <laughs> mm. All right, everybody, let's go. So, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, we, yeah, we, we, sh we should get a, 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 is there a map of this place? I don't know if I ever asked that. No. <laughs> Worth a shot. Mapping, mapping this so. place would be like trying to count the grains of sand on the ocean floor. Everything is changing here all the time. One duke rises, another falls. The terrain shifts, the continent changes. There is... This is a place in flux. It's a domain of dread. I'm going to pat the goat on the, the head appears. and get on top and just... Oh... Um, can you hand me my armor? Uh, Dondre, uh, hands you your armor. I'll go ahead and get, help, help you get set up. Um, you'll, you're, uh, so very surprised at how quickly it's just. Shield and hammer, just, thank you. Lean over to Queen. Need me a set like that. I would, uh, too heavy. <laughs> I've, I've been bulking since we've got here. <laughs> the spear's really kind of also heavy. Um, yeah. So, you know. If, if you guys want, you can take turns on, on goat. And like that a, way, and that way, like a mount? Uh, nobody, nobody gets too tired. Does that work? Helpful? Yeah. That would be good. Those two would be good to rest a bit. All right. Okay with you, and I'm patting, <laughs> I say okay with you, and I'm patting the head of uh, the goat, kind of weirdly rubbing, like like I'm petting the, the bone. <laughs> like... <laughs> I suppose it doesn't really matter. I serve at your pleasure. If you tell me to do that, that's what I'm going to do. Is that what you want to do? doesn't matter what I want to do. I'm a construct of your magic. Oh, wow. That takes a lot of the wonder away. All right. Why does it take the wonder away? You made life. Are you serious? It takes the wonder away? Oh, my God. I got a little... I mean, yeah, I have a soul. I'm a celestial from the celestial realm that was horribly disfigured by being born into a domain of dread, but it, my, literally my entire purpose, everything I want to do is to make your life easier. If it will make your life easier to let other people ride on my back, I'm fine with that. I'm not trying things. to be like, oh, as you command, Master. I'm not like some weird... I don't have this weird like slavery thing. I I actively want to make your life better. Oh oh okay then then yeah there's then uh, the one the wonders returned. Good. Also, stop petting my skull. It tickles. <laughs> I was trying to be nice. You were here here. And he lifts his head and like lifts a a, a hoof under here. Chin. Uh, okay and and <laughs> right, let's uh let's 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 go with we can be of uh. We can be of use. We can be of service. As you scratch under his chin, he's just like, uh, and he's just walking, just like, uh. <laughs> and then I'll just start walking towards the door, just going, we'll be of use. We will be of service. Okay. Up and away. <laughs> the main one. Turn the light, Tren. Why don't we go to Why don't we go to Folger first? We haven't checked in with him in a bit. Might be a show of respect to visit him first. Do we know how to get there? We've vaguely seen it in the distance. 
all due respect, Bosric, because I really do respect you very much. Not particularly interested in wandering off into the forest with no Good set point. path over. And the matron, the matron would know the way. So yeah, in the in the interest of actually making it there, that's probably a better better call. In the interest of keeping my brain at least loosely attached to the inside of my skull, I would like a map. It will it will be daunting enough. Right on, right on, right on. I, I appreciate your understanding. So I came into the matron's cathedral. Okay. Uh, so you make your way. It's like a half a day's journey to the matron's cathedral. Is there anything you guys would like to talk about on the way? I think Zero will definitely take up the offer on goat ride. And okay. Maybe not the whole time, but at least partially. It's a comfortable okay. ride. Yeah. If you ask, he'll He's just... Giggling like a fool. If you come over and be like, if you say to him, like, I, I, can I ride the goat? He would just, without a word, he doesn't say anything. He just gets down, passes over the reins. Holds his sword, uh, what's it, uh, his hammer and his shield, and just starts walking. Nice. I think Clovis will stick by the two of you as well, both because um, he wants to stay with people as much as he can on this trip through the forest, and also because he does want to turn on that goat. <laughs> uh, Boz will be kind of keeping his head on the swivel, watching for approaching threats. Okay. So you guys all, all I am my livestock here. Uh... Um, you well, left you early know, enough in the day that you're probably not going to have any problems. I love it when we have no problems. Um. So but... you... Go ahead. Nothing, nothing that wasn't worth it. Go for it. So you arrive at the cathedral and um, make your way in. And the matron is sitting in the front pew. Uh, it seems like having sort of the orb's power has given her the ability to be corporeal more indefinitely. Hmm. Oh, hello. I'll, I won't kneel, but I will still give a respectful bow. She smiles and inclines her head. I just raise my hand in greeting, just... Ah, good to see you're all getting on well. Mm, you seem to be faring well yourself. Yes. Well. Regain some of my former power, it feels nice to be able to protect the people I care about again. Mm. Like who? Us? You, yes, and the people in the village. Mm. Care about them a great deal. What is your increased ability to protect them? I'm simply stronger. I'm more me. Power has been robbed from the entity below the earth and returned to its rightful owner. We met it. Did you? You're cutting out a little bit, Carl. Yep, didn't get any of that. No. Well, well, old. He freeze. <laughs> he do freeze. He he's frozen in some wonderful positions. My favorite yeah. was when his eyes were like. Well, actually, would you guys like to go to? Uh, I was gonna say, well, if he's gonna be gone for a little bit, we sorry, go no, he's back. sorry about Whoa. sorry about that. My internet's being Whoa. problematic. You're you're okay. a little better now. So you so uh, you were saying that you met her, you met the creature twice. Mm -hmm. That's and you're still alive to tell the tale. That is quite something. Mm -hmm. The first time she seemed. Uh, more curious about us than anything, and sort of like she had something else to go do. Um, and the most recent time, a uh, cleric of yours, Lady Thane, managed to get us out. Ah. Amelia is such a wonderful devotee. Mm. I suspect your returning power has got something to do with her ability to help us out there. So thank you. Now don't thank me. Amelia is entirely her own bird. But I imagine you didn't come here for a social call. What can I do for you? Oh, 
Sure. Um, we were interested in uh, a map to uh, the Manufactorum. I don't know if that's something you could provide, but you seemed the most likely to be able to help us out with that. I suppose I could provide you that, yes, but that is a very dangerous journey. Are you sure that that's something you we want to a, do? We had a nighttime visit from an unpleasant uh, dream guest, as it were. Uh, Elizabeth, all to her, all to her old tricks, then. Um, Only worse. Some new tricks, it would seem. She has grown more powerful. Either that, or her... Um, Associate uh, was the one taking charge this particular night. Um, you can't see the matron's eyes, of course, because they're bandaged. But she, like, you can tell that there's a look of concern on her face as you say that. I see. I'm not sure I can speak more about it, but would you like to see? How do you mean? I assume I, you have some way of seeing what I saw. I would be willing to show you. She beckons you over. I go forward. And she puts her hand on your forehead, and it's only like a few seconds, and she just rips her hand away. Dear gods. That is a face I hope to never see again. So it is that bad. I can give you a map, but Folger won't let you in unless he wants you to be there. Hmm. You think Elizabeth can control the forest around here? Folger is much, much more dangerous. We are hoping to meet with him on the subject of her defeat and possibly seeing if he has anything he can contribute. Well, then I will point the way. And she, um... But there's anything you can contribute either as well. She doesn't we draw can... up a map, Whatever. but you see it's... her... You see her walk to the window and put her hand on the window and close her eyes, and you can see those night orchids growing off of the trees, making a path through the forest in the direction of the manufactorum. I'll, uh, as we're watching that, I'll give a little elbow to get Zier's attention and point out the window. See, I told you, she's cool. She can do plant stuff too. It's kind of, mm. it's kind of like, it's kind of like Karagoki. Mm. Another cool guy. The only thing I can offer you is advice, Buzzard Cobb. You will see many things in there. In... Lisa Betts Mansion. Things that will rend your soul asunder. Even telling you this, you won't remember when you're there. Hold firm. Stay strong. Can... I'm not going to tell you it's not real, because unfortunately with Lisabet, it is. But there is a way out. Oh, Buzz looks over at, uh, at Zero for... Is she a master of illusions? No. Illusions imply falsehoods, tricks. Lisabeth so brings your nightmares to life. Can she make us fight each other again? Potentially. Galnus turns away from the others when that's said. Do we know that Herr Folger's cool with us coming over? Nope. Like, we're in, like, an allyship, but do you think he's going to be okay with us walking up to his turf? I, 
Gregor Folger is one of the most ephemeral and enigmatic people I have met in my very, very long life. What he will think from one moment to the next is... Well, and she uh, inclines her head to Galnus. You're more likely to get a straight answer out of Dr. Fred. What is, what is this? Air Folger, what is, what is he? He is a machinist of incredible repute. How he came to be here, I do not know, but I know that the spores infected him to gain a mastery over metal unlike anything I've ever seen. It's twisted his mind to find imperfection in flesh. Steel is stronger, he says. He's not wrong. Um... <laughs> I could try to talk shop with him. I, I knew a builder. Yes. Once I upon a time. Him. I do recall that man. He was a fine machinist as well. I could talk shop. Talk about metal. Perhaps. Do you think, my lady, that he might answer if we call for him? If he hears you. He is a man constantly at work. The only time he takes away from his workshop is when he's seeking my aid or counsel. Hmm. So Get your tower! Him, so disturbing him might be detrimental. No. Depends on the mood you catch him in. People are territorial. Is he curious? But if you find him in a moment of success, he may be happy to work with you. If you find him in a moment of failure, he may make you his next experiment. I have an idea, but let's get closer Ooh, while I flesh it out. Hmm. What was that, Queen? I just said both not good options. No. There are fates worse than death. Hmm. So we've heard. Well, so we will see if you go to Folger's Manufactor. Oh, I know. If you've got an idea. Lady Amelia attached a forge to um, your uh, pop-up house. Mm -hmm. A great way to bring out any metallurgist or metalsmith is to ring sounds of metal being worked. Get within a vicinity and I'll start making something. I like that idea. Sounds it's, it's low impact. It's not a challenge. As a machinist, he would be more challenged if I was trying to make a an automaton or what is it called? A uh, an amit uh, a, a z -z 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 man, and um, I won't be doing that. So. It's the only plan I've got, and if that's good enough for you guys, then... It's worth, it's worth a shot. It's not and, uh, good to me. And what are we hoping to gain out of Vulture again? Council? Or just, just, just see if he has any council information or advice on how to fight the Lady in Black. Right. Okay. I might have to fight some... Werewolves on the way. I assume they'll be right. thicker near his place. Bosrek will get to test his new well, blade. Have to... Alternatively, we can just leave him be and, and take the fight directly to uh, Elizabeth. Where is she located? I think we've seen her house up on a hill, yeah? Yes. She had a clinic before. It was brought here when she was. She was once a 
very talented doctor. That should frighten us. Yes, it should. I say we stick with the first plan. We go directly after her with some of you already rattled, then it's just going to put you on a heightened awareness. Time to calm down fighting werewolves and moving through the forest. Probably better than confronting the very thing that scared you. It's just there's a not, thought. There's not a path outside of the woods. I think you have to go through the woods to get to the uh, Menifactorum. I don't think there's anything outside of the woods here. There's very little that can sneak up on me, so... That is good. All right. We'll look out for each other. Mm -hmm. Friends are good. Friends. Friends are good. Friends are good. All right, then. Well, best, best of luck. And he was following the night orchids. To see the machinist. You head off to see the machinist, and that is where we are going to take our break. <laughs> so when we left our party, they were at the matron's house heading to see Air Fulger. They were following the night orchids that were glowing and showing them the path, but they are losing the light. Doesn't bother me. <laughs> Doesn't bother me mechanically, but it bothers me mentally. Um... So I'm riding on the goat, and I'll say I am, since the goat is following the path, I'm spending more time focusing on my surroundings. How All bright right. is your lantern? It's under my cloak, so probably not. Okay. Um, then unless someone stops him for whatever reason, uh, I think Clovis is going to light a torch. Okay. It was fun... Those fun little guys we all have in our dungeoneering backpacks that nobody ever uses. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, if you guys wouldn't mind, um, I know this map is massive, but what? in the upper left-hand corner of this map, you will find an open square that you can see. Drag yourselves north of the spooky tree. If you wouldn't mind. How north? As north as you want to be. Like there? Yes. Oh. Where Bosric is. That is a good spot. Oh, wait. I don't see Bosric yet. Oh, okay. I am way too far away from that tree. Oh, I mean, you can the be there if you want to be. You're just going to be super trees. separated from the group. <clears throat> I feel yeah, like I'm it's... in front. Yeah, let's not. Let's not do that. I saw a different spooky tree. A different spooky tree has got oh. its eye on you. I, I leave it up to you if Galanus is in the front or not. Which tree? Are we headed towards the tree? You are headed away from the tree. Away from the tree. Yes. Uh, Balls, are you intentionally taking the rear? Yeah. Okay, in that case, I shall be... I should be here. Clovis, do we have a you? Um, yeah, hold on. Uh, roll 20's being a little funky. No worries. Roll 20 is a bit of a butt. It prefers gonna... smelly swampiness, actually. Mm. It's being a swamp. I don't smelly care swamp. what it prefers. <laughs> I'd prefer that it worked. Dream big I'll try, dreams. I'll try being nice to it. Roll 20. Would you please function? I would like to be able to say that you're a good program. 
And I think you could be if you really applied yourself. Roll 20, I'm going to switch to shard if you don't start working. Oh. Oh. What is... What is... <laughs> it's attacking my computer. Stop subbing me. Well, while um, Clovis is getting himself situated, um, you guys all hear um, from the direction you're heading uh, a sound of stomp, stomp, drag. Stomp, stomp, drag. That might be the big guy. Maybe put down the tower? Or snuff up the light. <clears throat> well, how far are we from our destination? Do we know? You do not. And now you're hearing more stomp, stomp, drag. It sounds like there's more than one of these things. Whatever it is. Okay, it doesn't sound do as big as the, um, the werewolf. Alpha. I like to hide. And Zero will start walking towards the tree. Okay. Pink. There I am. Is everybody hiding? You I'm, have approximately six seconds to decide what you're doing. It's I'm, a suggestion, and Zero's gonna hide I by will, the tree. I will hide in the uh, with goat in the uh, more uh, foliaged. Okay. I'll hide too. Um, All right. Roll stealth checks. Anybody who's hiding. I am not going to hide. I'm going to... I'm also not going to hide. Well, I was going to hit and step. <laughs> I... I should, you should do that. Okay. Not, the the only thing I can say is that it was not a... Um, it was not a nat one. <laughs> it was a nat two. Which makes I rolled a two. Okay. Um, Zier, you're relatively hidden with Great that stuff, 30. Man. Hell yeah, 30 with the disadvantage, baby. <laughs> um, so even Galnus and Boz kind of boffing, botching their stealth doesn't make you not hidden. Um, you kind of blend in with the tree with your cloak and like sort of cover yourself in some of the um, spores and stuff, so you blend in. Uh, Boz and Galnus, you, you're pretty sure you're hidden, definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, Yalnus does not think he's hidden. I would not suggest going out on a limb. You're wearing a lot of armor, and they're not that strong. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the five of you see, marching out of the trees, eight figures. They appear to be humanoid, but their eyes are sort of listless and you can see that there is a metal plate covering the left side of their face. Their chest has an open cavity, wherein you can see clockwork and no heart. And on their right arm, there is what looks to be a very long spike attached to some machinery in place of an arm, and that is what is dragging on the ground. And as they're walking, one of their eyes whips to the tree where Bosric and Galnus attempted to hide and, in fact, made it worse. And they open their mouth to make a noise, and it just sounds like metal screeching. And I need everyone to please roll initiative for me. Damn. No diplomacy. Oh. Initiative never means that diplomacy is no longer an option. That's true. 16, sir. 16? Natural 2, ladies and gentlemen. God, I'm rolling Please. hot. I'm a, I'm a four, baby. 29. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. 19. Weird roll 20 is not showing my bonus there. I don't know why that happened. I made it did. Okay. Um, well, it looks like you're going to be going in front of them regardless. Um, what did you... Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Zier got a natural 20. Uh, make sure you guys are clicking on your token, too, by the way. Oh, I, sorry. I can't. Sorry. Because of the way the uh, I'm running the stream, I can't. Oh, no worries. Okay, so Zier, you got a, a natural 29. A 29? Yeah, I don't know why wow. I didn't add the 9. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't either, but um, yeah, so that's first. 
Um, Boz got a 17. Clovis, you got a 19. It, it should be a 20. It also didn't add my plus one. Weird. Yeah, it's not adding the this. There's, it's like a closed parenthesis after everyone's. Odd. Because hmm. it added it for my bad guy. Which is okay. minus one. Um, Queen, like what it. was your initiative? Four. Four, okay. Nice. And mm -hmm. Galnus, what was yours? 16. 16. Okay, thank you. All right. I cannot believe myself. That's true. We can we can still <laughs> Well, I am invisible, so no one's no one's smacking me. Top of the lineup is Zier. I'm gonna go ahead and mark these guys while you're deciding what you want to do so that we can distinguish them. <coughs> Let's do a quick measure, shall we? 150 115. Is there a mechanical height advantage in D&D? &D? Uh, no. Bummer. Mm -hmm. Agreed. There should be. <laughs> I'll fix that, <laughs> says Quinn. <laughs> um, well, <clears throat> for narrative sake anyways, I think I'll go ahead and clamber up the tree. Okay. Roll an acrobatics check, please. At disadvantage. Okay. Um, well, um, it's a little clumsy, but you're able to do it. But that does take your action. That's fine by me. And okay. I am I still hidden, or do I need to rehide? Ah, uh, rehide. I will cunning action rehide. Okay. I can't imagine I will roll. As well as I did the first time. <laughs> but hopefully I still roll well. So I have a 16. Nice. Uh, you, you think you're hidden. Okay. You're not sure. Uh, Clovis, you're next. Um, where are they? I'll, I'll move myself slightly to where I'm They going. are 115 sure. feet north of you. Like here. North. Okay. Um... Clovis will just take a uh, a few steps forward uh, and torch in one hand, shield in the other, but not in a, a threatening posture, just in a, a like sort of neutral uh, stance. Uh, we'll say, "Hello, we're associate, uh, uh, well, acquaintances of Herr Folger, and um, we were interested in having a discussion with him, if he were available." Okay. Bosric. I will come out from the from the tree, hands up and not threatening. We apologize uh, for the for hiding. We didn't know um, if it was uh, associates of Herr Folger, but we would like to uh, make an appointment to speak with him if he is available. If not, we will be on our way and not trouble you further. Galnus. Seeing them running out there and uh, making bold declarations, <clears throat> I will, uh, one, zoom in a little bit so I can actually see the squares. Um, I'll step out in front, shield at the ready. I guess I'll just take the dodge action this turn. I don't say anything. I'm just moving in the direction of where they are because those people are, I believe, well outside of... Uh, yeah, they're outside of my range to uh, see or be okay. aware of. Yes. Uh, it is the augmented Sporeborn's turn. They are going to walk forward. Oh, like five, that, five, ten, five, <laughs> I, thought, I was like, name dropped. <laughs> uh, okay, they're going to walk to right here. Yeah. <laughs> they they and... all moved as one. Yeah, the group moved. It was really good. <laughs> Oh, they are, like, in lockstep. So that is going to be the end of their turn. Queen, you're up. Oh, man. Uh, thinking we might retreat. This is not looking good. I think we might have caught him on a bad day. Let's... We probably should just cut our losses. Yeah, what did they... Did they... Are they moving towards us with intention? Are they moving towards us because that was just their path? They are unreadable. To... Okay. Even with a check? <laughs> okay. Well, you like... roll an insight check. 
Okay. Because they're... I will give him a help action on that. They're robots. Uh, no. So Roll it inside. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, that's a... 18 plus 5. That's a 23. They're hard to read. Well, okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> That's you really... can't you can't give him help on deter on an internal determined thing in combat, there unfortunately. Goes. Not that good of a team yet. So I can't even like they're not, we they're attacking us. They're moving with you. Don't know they are moving they towards are, you. They are with, you can't tell. They are well, spaceless they're not automaton. Anything. They're not moving towards anything because they can't see me. At least, well, at least I don't know if they can see me or not. They might have um, a <laughs> So far, all they've done is look at the tree and screech, but they didn't necessarily move towards the tree. They just kept going well, in the direction they were. They also didn't going. dash. They just the moved their speed. Yeah. That could just be them, like, whichever one saw us alerting the others that there are things there. They might, know? I mean, they might just be patrolling, like perimeter, perimeter ring. Mm -hmm. Do I have anything that can hit? A wide range of people. Just, just do whatever Queen would do. Well, yes. WWQD. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to ramp this up a little bit. This Absol is no. By all means, <laughs> I apologize. Um, no, it's okay. I can I hold? I mean, I don't know what you can hold an action. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what necessarily I would do in this moment aside from hiding. Uh, and you can hide. Yeah, you can well, move. You are invisible. You can move to a place and hide. Yeah, well, roll 20 is completely shit in the bed for me as well. Um, nobody is in their, like, line of... Like, if they're just moving forward, nobody's in there. You you would be yep. the closest one, too. No one is directly in front of them. them. Yeah, I'm just going to move aside, I think, and and hold, like... Two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, I mean, I guess until they're hostile? like <laughs> When they become hostile. Okay, what is your triggered action? I will prep a... I can prep a... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Prep a, prep a guide and bolt at a robot. Sounds a good. Bit. Okay. Yeah. I will say that your held action is the first hostile robot that moves into range will get a guiding bolt. Okay. All right. Zir. I don't know what's going on. Yes. It's your turn. You're up. It is. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm sorry. I got caught up in a side conversation. Um... I'm, I'm hidden. I'm hiding. I am lying in wait. Um, if a hostile attacks one of my party members, I will shoot them with my longbow. Held okay, action. so you're you're readying a longbow attack. Sounds good. Okay. Um. Cool, Clovis. Which has yet to get a wet. I need it. I need to mark that on the left. Gotta yeah. bow. Clovis will. I hate move you all. To here, so that he is the closest to them, uh, to their path, um, and will not prep an action and continue to wait to see how they respond. Okay. That's me. All right. Bosric. Uh, I'm gonna just. Hold position, not look okay. threatening. Okay. Galnus, I believe blue is now in your visible range. Yes, um, blue is now in my visible range. They Actually, are, no. They are may all. I, may I back up one minute and sec. I'm gonna kind of like as my action for my turn. I'm gonna say, hold. They don't hustle yet. And okay. then that'll be all. Galnus. All right, I'm just going to move in front uh, roughly with uh, Clovis. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just laughing at, I'm in front, no, I'm in front, no, I'm in front. I'm moving over here. <laughs> and it's an elf and a, well, <laughs> half elf and a dwarf. 
Okay, and so uh, I will hold an attack on if one comes for me or Clovis. Okay. Um, it is now their turn. So, uh, blue is going to move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and is going to rear back with that spike. So now, going in descending order from people held, who held actions, it will be Queden, and then Zir, and then you. Galnus. So Queden, fire your guiding bolt at blue. Will do. That's 26 to hit. That'll hit. And 19 damage. Jesus. Guiding bolts are great. Yeah. All right. So um, uh, it takes the hit. Zir, you're up with your shoot. I shoot. Uh, and you have advantage because of the bolt. Nice. <laughs> and then technically ability... they're all happening simultaneously, but it's fine. And ab- <laughs> nice. An ability check would be separate from. It's not an attack, yeah. An attack. So I have advantage. True. Uh-huh. And you have sneak because of his relation to the others. Excellent. What's his range? It, it, if it's a long bow, you have range. Oh, mm-hmm. I have a short bow, but yeah. Oh, okay. it's, even he's, so. He's within 80. Uh, advantage roll. 19, 27 to hit. Yerp. That rolled, so, right. many, that rolled so many things. It did. I think it rolled. Do I, do I, am I, am I hidden? Uh, you're hidden. It rolled the sneak. But even if you weren't hidden, there's an ally within five feet. Oh, true. And I have advantage. Oh, so many things. So many things. Yes. Okay, great. So that looks like eight piercing, 13 sneak. Um, I don't think I'll do whales. Okay. Um, You notice that your bow clanged off of the metal part of its body and seemed to do less damage. Um, and Dallas. Uh, do I have advantage or no? Uh, no, the guiding bolt was spent. <clears throat> Damn. Uh, let me see. 13 plus my character sheet. Uh, 24. That hits. All right, let me die here. Gonna it clanged more. off and did no damage, or it clanged off and did minimal damage? Minimum damage. 7 plus 7, 14 damage. Okay. All right. Uh, This thing just kind of like shudders from the hits, but it kind of doesn't look like it did a whole lot. And then it cleaves back with that fist and you hear the sound of like air pressurizing as the piston pulls in and then it pushes it forward and it punches out. Um, So this is against Galnus. Um, dirty 20. So I think that misses. That but misses. It is also going to swing one of its big old meaty fists at you. That's fair. Uh, that will also miss. So orange 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 30. Orange goes to right here. And then you see it, um, like it pulls the piston back and you're like, and then it reaches its other hand forward and you see a blue shimmer. And it, Galnus, you feel a pull on your armor as it sort of locks in, and it shoots forward with that piston and slams into you. As if it is magnetically attracted to your metal armor. You think you can take that shit off? Uh, that is a 23. That, uh, yeah, I'm trying to, I, I probably would, uh, seeing it come in, I would just, uh, Kind of brace my shoulder, and you would see that heat-like, slight uh, flicker of uh, flame come up around me as I cast shield. Okay. So that's Five, not going to hit. 23. 10, 15, 
20, 25, 30. Uh, this one also preps its shield, its uh, piston back, but as it holds out its hand, it sort of like its body shifts and it locks onto Clo uh, Clovis and is going to move to here. All right. Clovis, will a 15 hit you? Nope. Very good. All right. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, this one is also going to piston slam into you, Clovis. Uh, that one will also miss. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, and then these just sort of shamble forward. 10, 15, 20, 30. And 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And uh, that is their turn. Queen, you're up. Um, great. They just, um, slammed into my buddies, man. I gotta... They did do that. Alright. How are we looking? Well, so nobody got hurt. One, two, so. three. Yeah, let's just move up to them at the very least. I can... Let's see, what's the most advantageous place for me to be? Uh, you are not see... invisible anymore because you fired that. Uh, Correct, that. yeah. Yeah, just so you know. Mm hmm Great. Um, well, I think I'm within touch, and they're they're robots. I can I can inflict wounds a guy, can't I? Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and and do that, baby. That'll be. Oh no, not third level. Okay. Are the Sporeborn immune to necrotic damage? The regular ones? They super... They super are. They super are. Okay. In that case... <laughs> you would... Well, you don't know that's what these are. Ah. Yeah, they they so might I'm, not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that ride. Okay. Um, well, so, unfortunately, you did, that is yeah. just like a thing that happens. Okay. But now well, you know that's what they are. Now, now we know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Red. Sorry. No, it's this, okay. This is this it's, is Dark Souls the D D game. No, so it's I have on to be me. a little unfair. <laughs> it's, no, it's not it's not unfair. It's on me. Okay. Um well then that will unless you have a bonus, that will bring us to Zir. I will no. Okay. Zir. Okay. I place my hand on the branch of the tree that I'm perched on. Uh -huh. And I just kind of quietly, like, um, oh, physical strength is not enough. I'll need a bit more. And kind of <laughs> in tune herself. She's not a druid. She doesn't really know how nature works, but she knows that's Haragookie's thing. And even though this tree looks dead, she's like, I guess this is nature. And so she's like, just kind of grasping it tightly. Um, for a moment and then draws her hand back up from the tree with whatever flavor you would say Haragoki adds to her hand. And then she goes to pull her short bow and as a bonus action, she's going to cast Divine Favor. Oh. Um, so the energy you, you sort of feel as you pull your hand up, there's no like physical thing, but as you put your, as you knock an arrow, you see vines and thorns wrapping around the arrow and making the arrow a little bit more refined. Nice. And then I let loose a shot. Okay. Uh, at red, green, blue, or orange. Um, blue is the one that you have hurt already. Let's do blue because yes. she knows what it looks like when a hit wasn't as effective against him. So he'll be a good baseline for if this helps or not. Yeah. Um, so she'll do blue. Okay. And then still advantage. No, no one's. No, yeah, it's not advantage. And it's also not sneak, unfortunately. Yes, because I've made myself known. Understood. It's 
It's okay. 19, uh, 19 will, hit. will hit, yes. Fantastic. So I do my damage with the so bow. Eight. And okay, then I which... also get... A D4 of Radiant. A D4 of Radiant. Not... What? Shut up. Hey. 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 <laughs> hey. Hi. I know one of your cats is acting up. Do the thing. No, I'm 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 hanging at roll oh, at, at D D Beyond. I'm trying yeah. to press I'm trying to press the one D4 radiant and it's not Okay, I'm just gonna roll it in roll twenty and then we'll okay. know that it's we'll know <laughs> that it's radiant damage. Yeah. Alright, four. four maximum. Nice. So the uh arrow sort of like skates off again, but as it skates, you see a little break where the arrow sort of like skimmed the armor split open as a plant grows out and starts to wrap around this thing's shoulder. Oh, thank you. She'll kind of whisper under her <laughs> breath. Um, do we... <sighs> so it seemed like the arrow still didn't do a whole lot, but the radiant damage did full damage. Yeah, which is which is good to go for that. Um, rogues don't get to attacks. They do not. So that's it for me. Okay. Um, I can't... You can hide as a bonus. Well, my bonus was my spell. Ah. So yeah, I can't. Okay, done, Skus. Okay. Clovish. <laughs> Before the great wall stands the guard. Rise, soldiers of Stendar, and serve. Uh, I'm going to cast uh, Spirit Guardians. Alrighty. Um, it is cast. Spirit Guardians go so hard <laughs> in this specific scenario. <laughs> yeah, when you get surrounded, Spirit Guardians is great. Yeah, that's perfect. Yep. Oh, wait, hold on. That was the wrong... Eh, yeah, fine. We'll cast it at uh, level three. I am also glad the two of them got stuck to Galnus, because Galnus is hard to hurt. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, whoa, the two shields are at the front of the party, doing all the shielding. How about that? So excellent. All right, uh, that's a wisdom saving throw for them. Okay. Um, and oh, now it's uh, now it's D and D Beyond's turn to be fucking up. So um, orange will get a. Is it everyone within ten? Is it ten feet or what is the range? Um, it is fifteen feet. Okay, then uh, orange gets a twenty-two. Okay. Um. Wait, sorry. Orange got an 18. Okay. Um, Number to green is 18. Okay, meets beats. Mm -hmm. uh, green got an 11, so green will fail. Blue. Whoops. Blue got a 10, so blue will also fail. And red... Auto fails with an at one. All right. That is. Ooh, good damage. Um, uh, that is 17 radiant damage for all who failed and half for those that passed. Okay. So. Eight. Okay. Um, all righty. Um, um and while enemies are within uh, 15 foot, so 30 foot sphere around me, 15 foot yeah. uh, radius, uh, their movement speed is reduced. Okay. Sounds good. Um, all of the, uh, before they just look like sort of general nondescript soldiers, uh, all of the soldiers around bear the um, turtle markings that Clovis has on his uniform, but they look like Bosric. Interesting. All right. Speaking of, Bosric. Uh, I'm going to bonus action. One last try to... Please, we, we, we don't mean home. We just we speak to a soldier. No response. They don't even seem to understand you. Okay. Well, um... That was movement. Uh, well, no. If you're if you're asking something and waiting for a response, that's your turn. 
okay. Well, then, yeah. You can move up, but no attacks. All right, all right. Um, yeah, move up to support, I guess. Okay. Waiting for <laughs> just kind of waiting for an answer. Gellis. Which might be a getting swatted in the face, but you know. Well, so far they seem they 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 seem so focused on the fight that you walk up, their heads don't move. Though the four behind them may have noticed you. So uh, as I'm taking my action, I'm going to say, "Thanks for asking." So glad I made you a sword, and <laughs> and uh, I'm going to start wailing on uh, these guys. Um, okay. There's going to be a twenty. Which one are you attacking? Oh, uh, I'm attacking orange with my first attack. Okay. Twenty six. That's uh -huh. And that's going to be uh, where's my D eight? That's going to be twelve damage. Alrighty. Uh, how is he looking? Great. Great. And I'll swing. Um, which ones can, are any of them can, like outside of orange? Is it connected to me? Uh, blue is connected to you. Blue is connected to me. Um, I'm going to swing down trying to break that connection. If that means breaking his hand, I'm all down for it. Okay. Um, that's going to be uh, a 30, not a crit. Uh That'll hit. Oh, it's not. It's not a nat twenty, and um, that's gonna be that's gonna be thirteen damage to the hand. Okay. Will that be it? Uh that that be all. Okay. Um, you swing down, you slam into the hand, and your hammer bounces off. Um, and now you you see like the bulk of this guy's hand is about the size of a Goliath. Um, and they are going to make their attacks. Orange um, and blue are going to keep attacking Galnus. Green is going to attack Clovis, and red is going to attack Quedon. Um, so uh, orange is going to start with a punch. Uh, and miss, and then it's going to rear back with that piston again. And also miss. Blue is going to try and punch. Uh, that will be a 25 to hit you, Gelnus. Okay, you said, uh, sorry. Yeah, you said uh, he just tried to punch me? Yes. Um, I'll, I'll let that one go. Okie dokie. So that will be 12 bludgeoning damage as that big meaty fist connects with your face. There. And then it's going to try and use its piston as well. Uh, and it will miss. A uh, question. If they're using their pistons again and missing, are they still connected to me at this point? Um, no. Thank you. Uh, so green is going to try and hit Clovis... Uh, Clovis, that's a 24. That'll hit. All right. Uh, and it will punch you for 11 bludgeoning damage. All righty. And then it is going to try and use its pneumatic piston on you as well. Um, score power reaction? Go for it. Okay. Excellent. All right, so you have that to five. Yeah. And now the piston uh, will be a 25, so... Uh, that will be 14 piercing damage, halved to 7. Okay. All right, and now, Quedon, it's uh, another one kind of turns to you and tries to backhand you with its humanoid fist. Um, that will be... A natural one! You can make a weapon attack against it if you'd like. I will do that. Okay. Um, it was already part of my plan for next turn, so I... Great. Um, that'll be... 21 to hit. That hits. And... Hey! Max damage, 8. Alright. 
And now it's going to try and, like, uppercut you with the piston. Uh, nope. First one was a one, that one was a two. All nice. right. Uh, purple is going to shamble 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and then it's going to slam into you, Quedon, with the piston. Mm-hmm. Um, for a dirty 20. Uh, that'll do it. All right. That will be 12 piercing damage. Noted. Ouch. All right. Um, and then 5, 10, 15, 20, 25... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 5, 10, 15, 20, oh, 20 boy. 30. Yeah, they all lined up. Um, okay, so um, Purple needs to make a save against the Spirit Guardians. Well, actually, Clovis, you need to make a concentration check. I made two for the two separate hits, and I passed both. Well done. Uh, okay. Uh, came in clutch. Purple. Uh... Fails its save. Um, yellow is not within 15 feet, and neither is blue and blue-red. So they will not take that. Um, but purple takes the damage of your Spirit Guardians. Um, excellent. So is that... Do you want me to roll new damage, or would it just be... Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take the old damage. Okay. Uh, then it is uh, 17. All right. It will take 17 damage. Um, okay. Um, and yellow... I think... Oh, wait, hold on. I have to make one more. Pain cast two. Roll against it two. Uh, uh, Pink will fail. Pink will take 17 damage. Okay. Um, and then all three are going to try and slap Bosric. Uh, the first one, uh, 18 to hit Bosric. I did explicitly say that I did not, that I had nothing in my hands, so I'm going to say um, that I don't have I'll say shield. that your weapon's no, drawn. I, no, I specifically said I had nothing in my hands. I will take okay. the hit. All right. Then 10 bludgeoning. And then the piston... Uh, 14. Two hit? Yes. Miss. Good. Okay. Uh, yellow. Will hit for 11 bludgeoning damage. And then the piston will miss. I'm glad I'm hitting you with the fist, because it does less damage. And then red-blue. Uh, will hit with the fist. For 13 bludgeoning damage, and the piston will miss. And that will bring us to Quedon. Okay, I was going to say um, that everybody can survive another round, but I don't think that's true anymore, is it? Um, Bosric's pretty tough. Okay, Bosric, you're, you're, you're okay. Um... I don't. I really don't like this. In a, from a scale of one to eighty-three, I'm at like a forty-nine. Okay. I live. Um, I have. I have ten bit points. I, yeah. I just. I want an. Ex, I want an opportunity because we've. Question. We've. We've rolled on these guys pretty hard. It, can I tell which one is looking the most beat up? Like, if, um, if at all. Blue looks pretty messed up. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I I wanted to be able to um where are we? I wanted to be able to spiritual weapon so that I can still make attacks while healing later on. Um, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um ba -ba 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 -ba. Yes. Um so, What shape would yeah. you like your spiritual Zarakis's, weapon to take? Zarakus' spiritual weapon is um, a spear. It's the, it's the spear. It's the glaive, right? yeah. It's the the glaive rather. Um I was going to say the, what's the, yeah. Um, so, like, coming up out of the ground, um, I just want it to, like, slice up from the ground, uh, moving upwards. Um, and we will, attack it. we will target blue um, with okay. that. Go for it. Great. Um, that is a 25 to hit. 
That'll hit. And damage on that is... I am, yeah, I'll just cast that second level, so... Eh, eight. All right. And I'm gonna wail on red. Okay. With my mace. Alrighty. It's a 14 to hit. That will unfortunately clang off of the armor. Yeah. All right, that will bring us to Zir. I'd like to cunning action hide. Okay. Roll stealth. You are hidden. Twenty one. I would like to. Shoot. Shoot. Okay, who are you shooting? I will shoot blue. All right. That will hit. hit. Okay. All right. Nar. So that with that damage, um, Zir, you um. You go to fire the bow, and then something in the tree underneath you shifts beneath your feet, and it throws you a little off balance, and your arrow fires out, but you see that because you moved, the arrow kind of gets a curve to it, and it crashes into the glass front on Blue's chest, and Blue shudders, and you hear like that horrible sound of gears grinding when mm-hmm. there's something stuck in them, and Blue shudders and falls as plants begin to grow out of his corpse. Excellent. I would like to use whales. Okay. Because I did, I had advantage from... You did, yeah. Schnee. Mm-hmm. Which I don't think, I, technically I don't think I rolled with advantage, did I? Uh, no. Or I didn't have advantage to hit, but I did have the sneak. Yeah, hiding because you were hit, yes. Okay. Well, no, you would have had advantage to hit, but you, advantage you still killed you it, so. Mm-hmm. Okay. Don't matter. Um, I'll use whales. I'm going to use Malin. Okay. Malin, uh for the first time. So, uh, what was my sneak damage? 11. 11. So, that halved... Will heal. Is, uh, for that, it's rounded up, so it's six. Excellent. Who's the most hurt? Probably Bosric. It will heal Bosric for six. Okay, so since this is the first time you've used this, uh, what does Bosric see? So, um, we've seen everyone, so we've had Leif, who's knocked people over. We've had Gwen, who's kind of gone in and done some extra stabbing. Mainlin, I think, is probably in the tree with me, <laughs> kind of like s- sitting on precarious. Like I-, I think all of my siblings are like, if-, if someone were to look, are all perched on the tree with me. And I'm like, <laughs> why are you in? A- why are you in a place where it's difficult for us to be? Aren't you aware of us? And of course, she's not paying attention to them. But, um, so like, Mainlin's probably on like this branch here or something like that. Um, okay. Uh, and oh, I'm on here. Ping. So Mainland's probably here, and so I Zero think... is like if Jinx was emotionally stable and the ghosts she saw were real. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so... Uh... Also, for the audience, Mainland is a full centaur. Mainland's a, a centaur right in a tree right now. Yeah, <laughs> I it's fantastic. About that. <laughs> yeah. Well, so they're on this, they're on this branch, like, with their, their back feet on the branch. So they're, like, straddling, and they're, <clears throat> they're like, oh... Um, you know, they look hurt. They're they're very anxious. Um, and so there's kind of this weird zip from a different direction of like this this healing energy. Um, Mainland was a a wizard, so it it feel wizardy. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Bosric, you see 
like you didn't notice it before. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. There's a centaur in the tree with Zir, and it reaches out its hand, and the hand glows red, and you see one of the wounds on your chest close up. Maybe it'll be like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're like, ah. Uh. <laughs> they're very, they're very awkward. <laughs> so. And then Maylin leans over to use ear. Isn't that the guy that we like hit in the head? Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just making sure. Uh-huh. All right, and that will bring us to okay. Clovis. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have anything else there? No, that was all. All right, cool, Clovis. Yippee. Um, uh, I am going to take the disengage action and I am going to move up here. Okay. Which means my 15 foot radius bubble moves with me to encapsulate the two that were not already in it. Um, so they need to make a, a saving throws. Okay. They will do so. Wisdom number to beat eighteen. Yep. Uh, so this is the two color, uh, the two color nat twenty is it? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. it still takes half damage. Not on a nat twenty. Oh. Okay. Double on a nat one. Nothing on a nat twenty. Same as for you guys. Double. And then uh, yellow will fail. Okay. So seventeen uh, for yellow. Okay. Yeah. I'm fine with you rolling with that because it was a it's, high roll. It's high damage. Yeah. Figured you would be. <laughs> All right. Bonus. Uh, and yeah, that that's just a, a thing that happens to them. So um, yeah. I'll take a I'll take a note out of uh, Quedon's book, and uh, I will Ooh. I will spiritual my weapon. All right. Two weapons on one battlefield. Yep. What are uh, the odds? What are the odds? Um, and this one. Uh, Clovis will, uh, he's got his spear. No, actually, he still has the torch in his hand. Uh, he'll raise the torch into the sky, and uh, the the Greek column will fall down on uh, purple right in front of Queen. Okay. Cool. So that is... God, why is it not... I like that both of them are breaking right now. I do oh, really love that, like, Queden, who is not the war guy, summons, like, a horrifying, like, cruel-looking weapon. And Clovis, who is kind of the war guy, just summons a pillar. Ooh. <laughs> um, that is a 26 to hit. That hits. Excellent. And it's... Mighty foot! We are not what we summon. Uh, Except you are not. That's nine, count them, nine damages of force. All right, it will take the nine, and it'll be happy about it. Wow. Pause the week. Well, there's my internet. Um, am I all good? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we see okay. you. Okay, good, because my internet went weird for a minute. All right, I guess we're doing this. It is being done. Uh, I'm gonna cast. Uh, I'm gonna. Well, no, I'm gonna draw my sword first because that's what they. There's no one in 40s. Well, no, they, they do do that. Never mind. Uh, but no, I'm going to cast uh, Misty Step. Okay. Ooh. To teleport. Uh, can I occupy the same space as the column? Um. Yeah. Just I'll just move it. To, I'll just move it to the side. But it's in your space. Uh, and then I will draw sword and I will draw final promise. Now you're gonna have to tell me what what am I looking for with rolling this? Like because we haven't customized it yet. Yeah, roll the d20. Like just roll a regular sword attack and add two. Okay. Do I get advantage because I'm uh, I'm attacking purple? Uh, y no. no because flanking? of it because of its proximity to another ally. No. Hmm. All right. <laughs> 17 plus... Plus two, so that already hits. Okay. Well, this is one-handed, so... One so that is a D8. It's a D8 plus one plus strength. Plus... 
something else. A D8 plus one plus strength plus a D8 of force. So roll so, 2D8, add one, and add strength. Two force, four slashing, one plus one plus five? Yeah. Uh, so 12 slashing, two force. Two force, okay. All right. Second attack. Okay. That's a 16. Um, that will miss. Or is it a 16 on the die? Well, it's a like world of 16 on the die. Okay, then that will hit. Plus 10? 11? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, 4 force, um, 7 slashing. Okay. That's all I got. Okay. That is a lot. Galdus. Uh, which one did you say had the uh, the Goliath hand? Uh, all of them. All of them. Okay. They are they're basically jacked up dudes. Oh, okay, okay. I was mis uh, misunderstanding. I thought they all had different characteristics um, of different races. Um, no, given they, it looks like they took a normal person and like mutated them with like massive gains. Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, nope. Sweet swollenness. Got it. They have an enormous vine stoker. <laughs> and so... Church of Vine. What I will do is, um, just watching these mechanical things, I'm just going to drop my hammer towards my side and go... I'm just going to tip my head towards the uh, the lantern and be like, Edivar, what do you think we could make out of these? And then I'm just going to bring my hammer up towards the... Uh, that cog center you were talking about, I just watched what Zier's blast did to that. So I'm going to hit that, or that's my goal to hit that. Um, okay. It's going to be a 15 plus 11, so that's going to be a 26. That'll hit. Okay, I'll roll the second one as well. So once I pop it, I'm just going to just kind of crane my uh, arm to come right back in and kind of hammer straight forward. And that, oh, maybe it'll stay on my desk. Ah, it's a thirty, not a thirty-one. Damn it! Uh, <laughs> Which one was these? Were these against? Um, this is against orange because that's the okay. one I've been hammering on. Okay. Um, so that's going to be. Oh, that's not too bad. Fifteen damage to the first one. All right. And then, um, on the second hit, I've kind of gotten pissed off enough that these things are not taking damage, and I kind of invoked out of our bit. So I'm kind of feeling like I should do a little something. So I'm going to actually blast a, um, let me look at my spell slots here real quick. Uh, a third level spell slot for a smite. Okay. Um, so the initial damage is going to be seven. That's going to be 12 initial damage. Okay. And then I believe it's going to be 4d8. So if it's a third level, it's four. Yeah. Because yeah. they're not undead. Yeah. So that's going to be six... 12, ooh, 20, 25 uh, of the Radiant. All right. Um, as you hit it with this... Um, it's that forward strike right into yeah. the cogs. You hit it with that smite, and the glass, um, the casing around the glass absorbs most of the blast, but you can see tiny cracks forming at the edges. Um, I will say to everyone, uh, get... Behind me! And I will end my turn. All right. It is their turn. Um, I need them all to pay their taxes. Yes. Uh, double color. Will fail. Yellow. Will fail. Pink will fail. Orange will fail. It's great that they have advantage, except that they have a wisp of plus zero. <laughs> green, nat 20s. Good job, green. Red, nat 20s. Oh, shit. Purple. 
Got some new main characters, guys. <laughs> Purple fails. So okay. green and red are unaffected. Everyone else takes full damage. So that's 17. Oh, did you want me um, to... I, unless you want to unless you want to risk it, I'm fine with taking the 17. I'll stick with the 17 then. All right. Okay, that's a lot of that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. All right. Um Orange looks very messed up from that hit. Uh so yeah, Orange is probably going to go down soon. Um, all right. Ah, uh, this one is going to move to here. This one is going to move to here, and this one is going to move to here. So I am going to go counterclockwise, starting with the dual color, which is going to attempt to hit Clervish. I wish he wouldn't. I'm sure you do. But he will. He will. Try. He will. He will try. Is he uh, ready? Is it? Is it? Dirty 20. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and... No, I'm gonna take that. Okie dokie. This is the fist. Uh, 18 bludgeoning. Just bomb right in the back of your head. Have to nine. To nine, yes. Um... There was also something that I did incorrectly that if this hits, I will do correctly this time. Um... Piston fist... Uh, 14. So I believe that misses. That is a miss. All right. Yellow will try in the paunch. Uh, uh, 15. Does not hit. Okay. And piston fist. 16. Nope. Okay. Uh, orange is going to... Orange, pink, and green are going to focus on Gelness. Hmm. I like to think whenever they miss me with piston fist... Clovis feels the pull on his armor and just puts a shield in front of it. Yeah. Uh, what was wrong is the piston fist is magical and would get would bypass your resistance. Mm. Gotcha. Um, so, uh, Galvis, there, Orange does not like what you did to him. That is a 26 to hit. Uh, <laughs> watching him and seeing the uh, the movement of him forward, I'll just hunker down uh, behind my shield and just say, uh, Mother, a little help on this one. And I'll just kind of duck down and cast shield. Okay. Um, as you duck down and you say mother, there's a flare that comes up in front of your shield. And it makes the monster, like, you haven't seen any emotion. But as soon as it sees fire, it backs off. Um, and then it's going to come in with the piston fist to try to get around your shield. And it will miss. Well, it, we'll see. Oh, I use shield, so it's 28. Well, the first one missed, I know, oh. but the second one, it was attacking you with the fist oh. uh, again, but that did also miss. Um, all right, pink is going to try. And miss. And then uh, it will piston fist. Um, and it will miss. Uh, green is actually going to use its ability to magnetize to um, Bosric, which does not do, uh, do an attack of opportunity. One, because you use your reaction, but also because it is forced movement. So, Bosric, that will be a natural 20. That will be a silvery barbs. It. Okay. Sounds good to me. Uh, that will miss. Um, red will attack you as well. I will give that advantage to Gallus. Your next attack has advantage. Uh, red hits with a 22. Uh, that'll hit. Uh, 13 bludgeoning damage. And then it will try and piston fist. Also for a 22. 15 piercing damage. And I'm then... 27. Purple will go for it. Purple will get a 26. No, that doesn't hit. That doesn't hit at all. It's 13 <laughs> bludgeoning damage. Uh, which puts me down to uh, 14. All right. 
and fist will also hit for 11 piercing damage. I am down to three. <laughs> All right. Uh, that will be their turn. Queen, you're up. Well, I think I'm going to heal myself. Um... <laughs> <laughs> These two hit points I'm missing really, really push yeah, through. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really don't know how you're coping, honestly. Yeah, yeah it's no, fine. Think, it's fine. I'm gonna. No, think... it's fine. It's fine. You know, honestly, I don't want to say the next part. Let him get me. I'm fine. I'm gonna. I'll go down. I'll say hi to the thing, and then I'll come back. I'm gonna uh, really bold assumption. <laughs> um, um, sorry. Or you uh, kill I'm me, gonna... and you'll meet my uh, as of yet unnamed ranger. <laughs> Whatever I'm happens, gonna... will happen. Thank you for... At this point, I'm... it's all bad. <laughs> I'm gonna thank you for Missy stepping into my range so I don't have to um, go invisible to heal you. Um, so I'm just gonna back around to this guy. All right, um... you will take an attack of opportunity. Oh, oh shoot, red. because I'm leaving from red. red. God, yeah. ah, I forgot about that. That's fine. Okay. What's one thing? What you could do is attack purple with your weapon first, and then if that takes him down, move into his space. Does purple look that bad? No. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was you know, you're right. No, 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 you're absolutely right. Screw me for thinking anything good can happen. <laughs> it's fine. I'll take a hit. Uh, does a 17 hit you, Quedon? Uh, meets beats. Okay. Uh, 21 piercing damage. As that oh. piston just slams between your shoulder blades. Okay. <laughs> um, no, yeah. Fine. I'll... Just, just let me go. No. <laughs> I'm okay. It's fine. Save yourselves. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm totally okay. I will give you a. I'm gonna give you a fourth level cure wounds. Four. Wow. Yeah, I can do that now. Um, I can technically only do that, but only once. Uh, could I can, uh, that's 19, which is really not all that. No, okay, that's an okay roll. Um, it puts me up to 22, which is not three, which is great. It's not three. It is not three. Uh, 19, and then um, Spirit's Weapon can go wherever the heck it wants, uh, so it's going to... Um, it's gonna try to save you and attack Galnus and try to slice up Orange. Okay. Um, so that will be. Wait. I'm actually gonna roll this with physical dice this time. Okay. Hey, glad I did it. That's a seven plus five, is whatever that is. Or 12, right? 12, that's not going to do it. No, sorry. I, that was rolled, I rolled, I rolled damage. Sorry. Rolled a hit is a 25. That will hit. Seven, seven, or 12, 12 damage. damage. Goodness gracious okay. me. So, um. We got there eventually. Thank you. As Queden um, um, pulls the sword around, um, Galnus you kind of see it over your shield and you see that they're afraid of the fire and you bring your shield up, it stumbles back and falls onto Queen's weapon. It, you see the weapon pierce through the chest and you hear the, the grinding gears as it just falls off. Don't really grind my gears. <laughs> weapons, apparently. Weapons and <laughs> weapons in the gears. Uh, that'll bring us to the top of the lineup with Zier. Zier, my dear. My dear Zier. Uh... Zir's, Zir's going to mutter. She's much more accurate close up than far away. Um, You're probably better so, off staying far away. So she's gonna, how things are going. She's going to go, well, yeah, that's the concern. <laughs> Is that we're not, we're not taking them down fast enough. So she's going to go ahead and clamber on down out of the tree. Okay. I don't know how much movement you would like that to take. Uh, I'll say that's Maybe. 10 feet of movement. Okay. Regardless, she will cunning action dash anyways, actually, because she has to, so it will come okay. out in the wash. Um, she'll end up here. All right. If I'm if I'm here with Queen in here and Boss here, I get sneak. Yes. No, no, because there's another enemy within five feet. I move here. I get sneak on purple. 
Yes, no? Yes. Okay. Mm. No? Yes, because there is no enemy within five feet of Quedon, and there is no enemy that could deny you flanking. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Big brain. Big I brain moves. my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, really? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's oh, I thought, I thought you were saying it was silly, but it was no. real life. <laughs> Sometimes um, real life is the silliest and the saddest. Oh. Um, well, in honor of dropped PB and J, I'm gonna crit. <laughs> I'm gonna crit. You know, honestly, I, I feel like I deserve that for torturing Bosrick. I'm gonna crit in honor of the dropped PB and J. <laughs> oh, I guess in I guess in theory, me critting against you is not the desired goal. No, it's fine. These aren't me. I am only piloting the bad guys. I want you to no, win. exactly. Um, I will swap as I'm dashing about to my. Do I want to poison them or burn them? Burn them. Uh, burn you did them. notice everyone could see that they are afraid of fire. Yes, I burn them. As Rip if they on. were based on Frankenstein. Who would have thought? <laughs> wow. I, I, as I run, I swap to my rapier. Okay. Um, um, as you draw the rapier, uh, you notice that the sharpening that Galnus did gives it that same, like, white gleam. Uh, your rapier is now blessed and gets a plus Whoa. one to the attack roll. Whoa! Cool. And Galdus thinks he ain't got it. Galdus, you are the man! <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Okay, cool. Oh, I've got more. one job. One job. <laughs> hey, you're fucking doing that job. Think, but we don't need you. We need you for yeah, a lot of things. Yeah, I was like, look, it, you may have one job, but God, are you the best at it. Yeah. <laughs> and it is an important job. Yeah. Your one job isn't sweeping out back behind the uh, the stables. Yeah. So what what's the roll to hit there, Zier? Well, I'm trying to decide how human do these fuckers look. Very, but also very mechanical. But also very dead, if I understand correctly. They also have an acted human. <laughs> they have acted like machines. But uh, this is a misery killing. This is a misery killing. This is a misery killing. We will do lethal. Zir, roll a wisdom save. Is this against a spell or other magical effect? Nope, this is a depression save. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's not magical at all. Um, saving throw is not impacted by exhaustion of the ability. They are not. Not at level one. Stunning. Am I close enough to Galnus to get his boost? You are not. Okay. Three. <laughs> Uh, I got actually. I think that's a nat one. Oh no, it is a three. Why didn't it add my? I don't know. That's so weird. Uh, I okay. still don't think that's enough. So it'd enough. be a five. Okay, yeah, that's not enough. Uh, you you can't kill these things. Okay, understood. We get the like the <laughs> moment of like a tear, like. Oh. Yes. I uh. I will. Not go for the targetable gear in the middle, but I'll try to d disarm him. Literally, okay. Big on spike. I'll give you. I'll give you a choice. You can either take disadvantage on the attack. I'll still give you sneak. Take disadvantage on the attack, or do non-lethal damage. I'll do non-lethal. That's fine. Okay. Um, right. I'm I'm doing non-lethal, and I'm trying to like disarm him. If okay. that makes sense. So I mean, um, you'll have to literally disarm him. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so I will use my rapier. Okay. I do this. That's a right. twenty-seven to hit. I haven't added this hit. one yet. Um, I do this damage, and then I also do my D four as well. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully, roll 20 will show me the damage in a second. There it is. Um, okay, uh, you... Um, you go like you're going to stab into the gear. You lose your nerve at the last second, and you 
divert your rapier, but you hit um, a wire on the fist, and you hear a a fast, um, basically exhale uh, expression of air, and the piston falls limp. Uh, purple is no longer able to use its piston fist as you have disabled it. Yaha! Okay. Um, and then... Just a little bit, in your own way. I will wails and heal Boaz for six again. Okay. Well, I won't heal. Yeah. <laughs> Mainland will heal. <laughs> Still in the tree. <laughs> I think because it took so much effort to get into the tree, they are unwilling to get yeah, down. Yeah, Gwen just lives there now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so All you, right. get, you, feel a, you get another weird wizardy red shot and have another wound close up. Okay. Clovis. That's me. Um, Is it? Wow. Am I the man or am I the character? Um, so we have seen that they are also just ascended into of, the sky. Yeah, I did <laughs> actually. We have seen that they are afeard of the fire. Yes. Mm -hmm. Clovis did begin this fight with a torch in his hand. He did. Um, it is still in his hand because mm -hmm. he has not switched to his spear. Um, he is going to uh, try and get into like a defensive posture with his back against Galnus, because he knows that that's, you know, uh, there will not be an enemy coming from there. Um, okay. And he is gonna try and, uh, mostly his his goal is to see if they will be like forced back by the fire, but he is gonna make an attack okay. against um, uh, Red Blue, I suppose. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Um, so, uh, I don't know torch rules. I'm assuming that's a uh, weapon. It is, uh, roll it as a club. So it's, uh, just roll a d20, add proficiency and strength. Okay. Um, or dex, whichever is higher for you. Uh, strength. In which case, that is a... Oh, I get proficiency with this, because I'm proficient with this weapon. Mm -hmm. You're proficient, um, proficient so with simple weapons, yes. Uh, 18 to hit. That will hit. Nice. So that will be a d6 of fire damage. Hell. Plus your strength. Uh, that is five fire damage. All right. Um, so as you hit this thing with the torch, uh, the flesh parts of it light up as if they had been doused in gasoline. And it starts screeching in that metallic metal sound. And it is actively on fire. Cool. I do not have extra attack, so I cannot attack the other one. Um, uh... But um, I will have uh, around uh, Bosric, uh, the image of Stendar will grow briefly for a moment uh, around the pillar and just pick it up and like just <clears throat> down on uh, purple. On purple? Yes. Awesome. Yeah, purple is very messed up. Like mm. that d damage seemed to really mess up its arm. Um, oh. It's still not working. So, d8 plus four. Uh, that is. Well, let's roll the hit first. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> so true. Uh, twenty-one. That hits. Don't even roll damage. It had two health. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Bosric, you see like the avatar of Stendar sort of surround you. You pick up that pillar, like Clovis described, and just <clears throat> um, as it picks up the pillar, there's a little bit of purple like on the bottom of it. <laughs> And that will bring us to your turn, Bosric. Um, I can move it 20 feet. Yes. Uh, so uh, after picking it up, uh, Stendar will just like flip it forward um, to land. Uh, I will do ping, I think. How do I ping again? Okay. Uh, just click and hold. Right here. All right. There it goes. Actually, uh, right here. Okay. So that works too. Uh, Bosric, it is your turn. Um, green and red both look relatively healthy. Red is a little bit more damaged than green. Okie dokie. I will activate my spirit of fighting. All right. 
When will he activate the spirit of piercing? We may not. Hey, I tried. He did. Tr he, <laughs> did he did try. try. The he tried, tried the longest. Mm -hmm. uh, only a seventeen on the die, so plus eleven. Still hits. They their armor class is lower than seventeen, so. <laughs> Uh, we are deep enough in the fight that I don't mind telling you just to save time. Uh, target number is 16. Cool. Um, five... They're not well armored, they're just tough. Um, 11 slashing 6 force. Alright. And this is against red? Yeah. Alright. Um, your, your blade is not turned aside by their armor. It seems like whatever enchantments that Galnus and Clovis poured into it can bypass their resistance. Um, another 11 slashing and 5 force and pump, I'll pump a uh, ancestral strike in there. Okay. For 9 radiant. Alright. Uh, yeah, that was a hefty hit. Red is not looking great. Um, all right. to do this. Galnus. Um, <clears throat> uh, who is yellow You're... focused on? Uh, yellow is focused on Clovis. Your first attack has advantage. Okay. Um, how's Clovis looking? I didn't say, like, hit points. Like, how are you looking? Uh, he's fine. I, oh, he's he's taken some damage, but he's still, especially because you can see he's got the like uh, turtle carapace growing uh, over his armor. He's oh. he's fine. If I'm seeing that, I'm just gonna turn back and be like, "So I'm a conduit," and is what he's gonna say to Clovis. And uh, I'll, I'll actually just focus on pushing the power of that lantern through my hammer, and I'm gonna go again straight towards the uh, the glass on pink okay um so basically i'm talking to my friends internally in my mind as i've done many times and basically trying to will them through the hammer uh the head of my hammer and um roll, well okay roll religion well, real quick religion okay yeah um, that's going to be a 15 plus what is my if you're not trained, it's just your intelligence. Okay, so yeah, it's going to be a, uh, yeah, so it's plus one. So 16? Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, everybody sees the end of Galnus's hammer glow, not forge red, but a little bit orange. Uh, I'm going to say that for this turn, your attacks add a d4 of fire damage. Okay. Um, because I... I think that was cool. And you know what? If you don't have inspiration, you do now. I still have it. I, can't, I keep forgetting it's there. Um, then you can pass it off to one of your comrades. Who I'll does not have it. inspiration? I know, and I gave you advantage on this attack. So, well, I and, and I'm going to roll a d uh, a d three because I want to be fair. Um, I'm going to go as you oh, go what? around since since it's straight down. Uh, Boz one, Clovis two, Weedon three. Well, well, Boz gets it anyway because it was a one, but all it's right. very fair. It's so <laughs> so. Um, as Bosric, as that, um, you see the hammer light up. The uh, sword in your hand shakes a little bit, and you hear a voice say, "Oh, we'll not be one up, will we, child of the Tengu?" And so you get the inspiration. Um, so I'm going to say that a thirteen doesn't hit. Um, no, it does not. Okay. Um, wait, I have advantage. Well, you do have advantage. So, I was say, with advantage. So I finally got the number I wanted. 31. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Is that an at 20? Yes. All right. Oh, yeah, um, baby. Fuck I'm going to say, up. with I... your prayers, because you designated you were aiming for the heart and you crit, pink is dead. You shatter its heart. Oh. That is uh, crazy. I would say, yeah, again, he's not swinging like this because that's too difficult. Basically, back and just push it in. Um, where before things were getting caught in the gears, you actually slam into that glass and the mechanism that powers this thing shoots out of its back and lands on the ground and it just collapses. 
I'll rip out my hammer and, and uh, just call again. If you're hurt behind me. And he will go like this with his shield. You'll just see him go like this. And um, if you're standing behind him like Clovis, you'll see he has just taken a swig of his uh, flask. Um, <laughs> well, I'm, 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 like, now. I'm like back to back with you, torch and, and shield in hand. He'll give you a little like nudge with his shoulder and say, I told you. With us always. And I will say he is just in the moment and he is drinking. All he hears is always and is very confused. <laughs> and I'll end my turn there. You do have another attack. Yeah, I forgot. I attacked twice. <laughs> I, I know that was a really cool attack, no, but I you mean, do have another one. <laughs> um, so yellow is uh, dealing with Clovis. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, just turn and say... Uh, let me see if I if you want to try to be a shield, I'll try to be a distraction. And I'll swing for its arm, trying to turn it towards me. Okay. And that's gonna be a an 18 plus so that's, yeah, it's again, that's a 29. That hits, yeah. yeah, it's hits. The, and let me roll the T. Seven plus seven, so fourteen. Alright. Oh what plus four? I have to roll the D uh four because I'm Correct. I'm here, D. Um, three fire damage. All right. Uh, and this one is ignited as well and seems horrified by that fact. I smile as more fire is here. Um, okay. Um, it is their turn. The two that are on fire are going to just wildly swing at, um, Clovis. But uh, unfortunately... Turn? Uh, yes. They're going to pay their taxes first. Okay, they will pay their taxes, perhaps. This is the only time I've ever wanted to hear those words. <laughs> you haven't played against my Rhystic Study deck enough. Uh, okay. Hey, oh, Frankenstein, man. The IRS has come. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> and I got the pretty ones, too. For invoking uh, the IRS, is that, that extra that, damage Frank, against them? Frankenstein or his monster? Sorry. Yes. For, uh, real ones, though, Frankenstein was the monster. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So they have disadvantage on this save. Normally they would have advantage, but they have disadvantage for being on fire. Yeah. Um, two color will fail and take 17 damage. Yellow will fail and take 17 damage. I don't down. think the burninators kills <laughs> either of them, but it certainly doesn't help their chances. Um, all right, red. Uh, red will pass, but take half, so it will take eight damage, and green will fail and take seventeen. Oh, I just realized they attacked the red one. That's going to be taken personal. It might. Um, so, um, yeah, so they're going to wail on you with disadvantage. Well, it's a normal roll because they normally have advantage for being near each other, but disadvantage stuff. So. Uh, fist against you, Clovis, is a 26. Oh, uh, yep, that'll hit. Four, seven bludgeoning halved to three. Okay. And then a fifth and fifth. Fifth and... 14. That misses. Yes, it does. And then yellow will hit you with its fist for 10 bludgeoning. Okay. Half to 5. And it will try to pissed and fist. Uh, 21. Uh, I'm going to shield that. Okay. Um, red is going to swing at Galnus because Galnus is wielding fire. And red wants that to go away. He's so uh, twenty-five. Your cigar at him. Uh, no, uh, yeah, I'll. T I'm. I'm preoccupied with uh, yellow, so I'll say I'm. I'm going to take that. Okay, seventeen bludgeoning damage. That's. That's. I shouldn't have taken that. <laughs> he just cracks you in the jaw. Um, and now the piston fist. Uh, 24. Um, now I will... I, he got my attention with the first one, so now I will shield. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, that's probably good. The Piston Fist is worse. And then Green is going to continue trying to wail on Bosric. Uh, that is a natural 20. Luck, uh, oh. Can I use a luck point? Uh, yes. Then I will do so. Okay. Remember, uh, also, yeah, 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 also no, has it an isn't. ability that can only be yeah. used for that. Yes, so perhaps... I was I was going to raise my hand, but then yeah, you do you want to take the so... hit or do you want to use your luck point? Because it won't be a crit because of Queen's proximity. Uh... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let Queen deal with it. Okay. Although this is a fist, right? Like... This is the fist, yeah. Sentinel at death's door. Uh, so that will be Get Sentinel on <laughs> eight bludgeoning damage. Okay, I'm down to twenty five. And then oh. El, El Fisto. I had five. I had uh, five, ten pit points. Uh, that is another crit. Would you like to luck that one? Because Queen can only That one once. I will. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I only have, yeah. Hmm. 26. Well, it's not a crit. <laughs> it is not. Uh, nine piercing. I'm down to 16. Okay. Queen. Yes. I'm going to. Am I really not? I I can just go anywhere. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not engaged anymore. Yeah. Look at me. They've called off the wedding. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Uh, Well, first action. I can find no bachelor intends to remain so. (laughs) Red is looking the worst, right? Uh, yes. Of the of these two that are down here, red is looking the worst. Of Of all of them, also looking the worst. Of all of them, um. Oh no, of all of them, Red is looking the worst. Great, I thought so. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna try to do my best to continue um, being the um, deus ex machina of, uh, of this campaign here with this, um, of this combat here with my spiritual weapon and try to move over to him. Uh, I don't think you can move it. I think I have to move it, but I will move it regardless. Uh, yeah. Um, who no, are you I was trying to do red? that for a couple of seconds there, and it wasn't letting me. Uh, um, yes. All right. The spiritual weapon will. All right. Going to hit. And that's a twenty-nine. That'll hit. Great. Digital dice don't fail me. They did okay. That's ten damage. Rolling five DF. What the hell did I do? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What is uh... that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay, so, uh, why don't you tell me how red goes down? Um, I think, yeah, I just, like, I think it's just making, like, symbolic, like, just vertical slices. Like, it's just, like, (laughs) until it just, like, slices it into ribbons. Nice. All right, now you have an action. Great. Um... I we got so I got, um I've I've got to heal someone, don't I? Um, you don't have to. Well, you can right. kill them. You're the best. No, okay. the well, the way you worded that <laughs> thing is, um, Boz. I'm is just glad that I've cracked Galnus's right? shell a couple times. Yeah, Galnus, you're you're looking the worst, right? I need Galnus. Yep. I think um, Boz still looks worse than me. I'm out of 116, I'm an 87. Oh. Out of 83, I'm 16. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I moved over here. Actually. One of those numbers is lower than me. What? Of... <laughs> what? <laughs> One of those numbers is my whole HP, and that's not a joke. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, you'll get a... Living that cleric life. Yeah, oh, wait, wait, holy cow, is that right? Third level cure wounds? Yeah, you get 27. Yeah, third level cure wounds are a ton. Nice. Yeah. So Thank what you. was it? 27, sorry. Nice. Just wanted our viewers at home to be able to hear. <laughs> no, absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's a big heal. Let's go. Uh, how does your uh, cure wounds look? What a question. Um... <laughs> It's gotta be like, cure wounds 
has to be physical touch, or is that... Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. physical touch. Yeah. Right. Um, so, um, I think, like, yeah, I just, like, lay a hand on him. Not that one, but <laughs> I lay a hand on him, uh, and, like, my, my, like, you see, like, the color, like, drain a bit from my hand, and, like, my fingertips are go going a little bit black. <laughs> Uh, and it, but it just like, um, and then it comes back um, in like almost fuller force, um, or almost fuller color. Um, both I love mine, that. Uh, and in bosses. Nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, then that will bring us to Zir. Yeah, ha, ha. Here comes Zir, ready to do essentially the same thing she did last time. Um, I'd like to swoop here. And I will, seeing that Boz is pretty hurt. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just gotten much better, but yeah. Um, I will go ahead and... Um... Yep, just go ahead and attack it. So okay. I'll use the repeater. Am I um, tripping? Where the fuck did you go? I was just like, Zir, where did you go? I'm right here. Oh, you're under oh. you're under Queen. Am I? Yeah. He's, he's here for me. Oh, weird. Hmm. Where do I need to be? I can be uh, here. Yeah, you can be there. Okay, fantastic. Uh, and you get sneak on this. Yay. Uh, roll another wisdom save. Okay. Understood. Are you depressed? Let I fate am. decide. Okay. So you can disarm. That's the plan, baby. I really want to see Zir as an Oath of Redemption Paladin suddenly. <laughs> I can fix them. See. We can rebuild them. You don't have the technology, but fold your best. Clearly, he does. Do I have advantage? Yeah. Yes. Well, mm, you have sneak. That's fine. Yes. I'll take advantage. It's okay. 11 plus 8 is still 19, which is above yeah. DC. Regardless. Mm -hmm. Beep. Beep. Why Why no show? Why no show damage? Star no, does. All right. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll, you, we'll uh... super duper use whales this time. Still the same thing. We'll heal okay. boss. All right. So half of 19. Round it up. So 10. Round it up. So 10. 10 healing to boss. Yeah. Um, you actually hear boss on the wind. Let's not make a habit of this, big man. Mm. I can't promise that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Clovis. Me. Um. Did it lose its arm? Like yeah. the other one? Yeah. You. Okay. You deactivated the piston fist. Nice. Um. So uh, while I'm over here, wait. What? Do we? Where's the thing? Uh, the thing is. Where's here. Trinky? <laughs> okay. Continue. You can go get it. You can still go get it with your remaining movement. <laughs> So you guys see Zier go of, run over to the well, uh, heart mechanism and just. <laughs> can I be can I be here so I don't lose so I don't leave melee? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. I all mean, good. you you didn't leave. Yeah. All good. Yoinked. Yeah. So Zier has yoinked the mechanical heart. <laughs> it is in the, <laughs> it is in the pocket. Uh, yellow and blue red are both on fire now. Yes. Okay. And how how low does green look? Uh, green, green and yellow look relatively fakakta. The two colors are, the two, excuse me, the two colors pretty hale and healthy. Okay. Um, I think Clovis is going to torch, uh, yellow. Okay. Well, mm, hold on.
Um, you still have a uh, lovely pillar. <laughs> yes, I do, and I and I've, you are a pillar of this community. I am a pillar of this community. Jojo pose. Um, rather than that, I'm going to have uh, uh, rather than the torch, I'm going to have yellow make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, oh. As I um, Clovis smacks the butt of the torch against his shield, and instead of making the sound you would expect, there's a, a low, ominous dum, dum. You are a pillar man. I am a pillar man. A pillared man. So, what what you doing? Wisdom saving throw. On uh, green or yeah. yellow? Yeah, here go. Uh, eleven. Hmm. Um, that is not a pass. Oh wait, there we discovered their. Did you just cast necrotic. all the dead? Yeah, we discovered their immune to necrotic. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I'm still gonna do it because it's fun. Yeah. Um So, theoretically. Hypothetically, if we were being goofy silly with it, uh, that would have been um, 13 uh, damage uh, as the sound of the bell uh, fills the air. And the. You do that. Yellow yellow looks at you, kind of narrows its eyes, and then takes out (laughs) AirPods. No. He couldn't hear me. He had his AirPods in. Uh, And the uh, pillar is going to. uh, Stendar is going to. Uh, pick it back up and try and like baseball bat swipe at uh, green. All right, sounds good. So their flesh is immune to necrotic. What about the metal? The metal is also immune to necrotic. It's worth uh, a shot. Eighteen to corrosion. Hit. I was thinking I that hits. Said it does. Um, well, yeah, it's normal metal. You think you think Folger is out here making these guys out of normal metal? Um. <laughs> I'm asking so as to ascertain. I'm telling uh, you. That is max damage for 12 force damage from Keel. Wow. Okay. Uh, surprisingly, green is still up. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm as surprised as you are. Yeah. Uh, but as he, like, uh, I think rather than baseball bat, he, like, goes and swings it down. Um, and then the, the like, shimmering image of Stendar will turn to the... Uh, um, scythe of, or the glaive of Zarakis that is right next to it and say like squashing ants, isn't it? Um, so as you, sw- as uh, Stendar swings the pillar, uh, Green sees it and like lifts that big meaty hand and it catches the pillar, but then you hear like a pop in the shells and it's just like, <laughs> um, so it's still alive, but early. When you, uh, try, and bring catch, us- when you try and catch a pillar, but you're pistonless. Yeah. <laughs> Pistonless. Mm-hmm. No pistons. No pistons. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring us to boss rig. Uh, uh, fighting spirit. Oh, no. Never mind. Okay. Plus t- like eleven, so an eighteen, uh, nineteen. That hits. Sixteen is the target. No need to roll damage. It had one health. Just tell me how you kill it. Wow, <laughs> a singular health. Um. Through the glass, and I lift it up. I tried to be diplomatic. I really tried. It collapses to the ground in front of you. And I will... Let me measure, because measuring is important. You can absolutely make it to yellow. I crit on an 18 now, but I never roll an 18. It's still hit though. <laughs> well done. Six, 
or six plus six. Twelve slashing, eight force, and I'll do another. No, no, no. All right. Another... Well, uh, Bosric Reaper of Souls here. How do you want to take that one out? He's just, he's just, something is taking the, the wind out of his sails on because he knows, he knows this is going to be nothing but trouble. So he just kind of, as carefully as possible. All right, uh, you dispatch it and it collapses to the ground. Galnus. Uh, I'm watching that one drop. I'm going to kind of just skip backwards almost. <clears throat> next to here and say, and he'll even say, excuse me, Scythe. And <laughs> he's just going to bat like backhand swing into that uh, glass on uh, red and blue. Okay. And uh, I'm glad I have a plus 11 because that six sucked. Um, so I'll be 17. It's going to be six. 13 damage. All right. Um, and then, uh, again, just crashes on it this way and then just kind of pulls the shield back, arcs over, but, uh, again, still aiming for the glass. Nice. Uh, that's a 17 on the die, so my bonus doesn't matter. Yeah, that'll hit. Um, and that's going to be a six again, plus five, oh, no, six plus, six plus seven, 13. Okay. So it's another 13. As in, when I hit it with that one, I'm trying to kind of, on the pull, hook it so that that way it is turned directly towards me. Um, and it is. Um, so it is their turn. Um, but before they can make the save for the, um, the aura, this one you see sort of like stands straight up, its arms at its side, and it is lifted off the ground. We are... And then crumpled in the air. And you see a man walking with a hammer far too large for someone to be carrying in one hand, holding his fist closed. And he says, well, I will have to make the next batch a little bit tougher, don't you think? And then he drops it and says, I apologize for the formalities, but I had to make sure you were strong before I let you in. I can't have someone weak and useless. Excuse my boon. I don't think we've met personally. And he takes the hammer and he slams it into the ground. And there is a crater when it hits the ground. And he says, Herr Forger, at your service. And that is where we are going to end this week's session.